We're talking about Kanye West with his uh, another employee suing him, another employee lawsuit where he's basically not treating his employees the best. So now they are suing him. And then we have the Birkin bag, which is an expensive handbag that I know I can afford, but they're being sued for basically letting people like me who can't afford it, not even being the, the not even getting the opportunity to see the bag in order to buy the bag, knowing that we can't afford it. They don't even want us to look at it. We're so poor, they don't even want us to look at it. Like, isn't that insane? So let's go ahead to the actual cases for today. Do, do, do. Where did my other screen go? Where'd you go? Right there. Okay, now it's showing. Okay, so we are starting off with the Birkin bag complaint. We might skip around in it a little bit. It gives us some background on who um, the Birkin people are, the Birkin people, who Hermes is, and all the other things. Um, let's go ahead and transition into this one. All right, here we go. We got Tina Cavallari and Mark Glen Glenogan suing on behalf of themselves and other similarly situated people. What does that mean? We have ourselves another class action where these people are mad that they didn't let them look at these bags, okay? And they feel like there's other people like me, you, all the people in the Brie Hive. I don't know if any of you have gotten to lay eyes on a Birkin in a Birkin store. I've never even stepped foot in an Hermes store, okay? I've never stepped foot in there. I don't even know where they're located, but apparently there's eight in California and I'm in California, but probably not near a Birkin store or Hermes store. No, you know what? I have seen an Hermes store. It was in an airport though. Or I might, I might be confusing myself. I'm not super big into Birkins, but I'm pretty sure there was one in the airport. Anyways, I digress. Um, we got these people suing for themselves and others similarly situated to them. And then they're suing Hermes, the makers of the Birkin and the Kelly and the, the bag that we cannot get our hands on because we are poor people and we can't afford to buy their little, what they're calling ancillary products plus the Birkin bag. So I don't think I will be upset if I never get a Birkin bag in my life. I didn't even know about Birkin bags until like a couple years ago, like, never crossed my mind, didn't know what it was. It just came to, it just came to existence in my brain. I don't keep up with that kind of stuff. Anyways, let's go on. This is a lawsuit for violation of the Sherman Act, violation of the Cartwright Act, violation of the Cartwright Act again, and violation of the unfair competition laws in California nature of the action. This is an antitrust and unfair business practice class action arising out of defendants Hermes Nash International and Hermes of Paris Inc. Defendants, um, also known as defendants or Hermes, unlawful practice of tying the purchase of defendants popular Birkin bags to the purchase of other defendants, uh, to, to the purchase of other defendants. I don't like how they worded that to their other luxury clothing and accessory items. As set forth here in defendant's practices are unlawful and it's the, in this action plaintiff on behalf of themselves and all other similarly situated seek compensatory and punitive damage and appropriate injunctive relief. My question is how long has Birkin been doing this though? Like, is this something that they're going to be able to succeed on? I don't know. We got the two plaintiffs, they're residents of California. We're not going to go through all Hermes. They're famous. They make bags. They, they, they got a lot of money, right? We're in California because this happened to them through California stores. Let's get into the factual allegations because we got a lot to get through in Kanye. And this one is not as intense with the facts. Hermes is a world famous designer and producer of high quality merchandise, including luxury bags, apparel, scarves, jewelry, fashion accessories, and home furnishings. I did not know that they made home furnishings. I wonder how much that stuff is. We'll look in a second. Uh, for decades, Hermes has developed its reputation and distinctive image. Hermes or origins date back to 1837. God dang when it began designing and manufacturing high quality harnesses for horses. So if you ride horses, you can get a Hermes harness. 
because your horse needs that. Okay. During the 20th, well, maybe it was just more practical use versus like a luxury use. Like, oh, I have the Hermes saddle. <laughs> get your money up. Where do, you, where do you get your saddle from? Walmart? Yes. Yes, Hermes. I got my saddle from Walmart. I don't even know if Walmart sells those. But anyways, during the 20th century, Hermes expanded its business to uh, ex expanded its business to include a handbags, personal leather goods, and apparel. Hermes is the exclusive distributor and licensor of the United States of uh in the United States of its merchandise. So other random people cannot sell it. Well, I mean, you can resell it, but as far as getting an original, you have to buy it through the Hermes store, y'all. Give me a second. I got to turn on my alarm because yeah, I have a little bit of anxiety about why my Wi-Fi turned off, but it is what it is. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see. Hermes sell its products directly to consumers through Hermes-owned retail stores and except for Birkin handbags through its website at Hermes.com. Hermes currently operates approximately 43 retail stores in the United States with eight of those retail stores located in California. I'm assuming that a lot of them are going to be in that LA area because those are the kind of people that buy Birkin bags. Not to say anything is wrong with LA people, but you know, they like Birkin bags. Um, <laughs> the Birkin handbag, let's talk about it. Hermes is well known for the famous Birkin and Kelly handbags, collectively Birkin handbag, which are exclusive Hermes designs. Each Birkin handbag is handcrafted from the finest leather, leather by experienced artisan and art artisan in France. The manufacturing of a single Birkin handbag requires many hours of an artisan. Am I saying that right? Artisans? Artisans time. Let's go with artisans. I like that better. That might not be right, but I like that better. Um, the extensive labor and craftsmanship and high quality leather requires, required the High quality leathers required to make the Birkin handbag difficult to produce and expensive. The price of a Birkin handbag from the price of a Birkin handbag from thousands of dollars to over hundreds of thousands of dollars. The desirability, okay, come on, computer, get it together. The desirability of an Hermes handbag, a symbol of rarefied wealth, is such that not even a global pandemic can dull the demand for it. In the second quarter of 2021, Hermes sales for the leather and saddlery division, which includes Birkin handbags, more than doubled from a year ago and rose 24% from their pre-pandemic June 2019 level. So despite us all being unemployed and, you know, struggling to survive, people were still buying Birkin bags. <laughs> That's what they let us know. Despite the price and exclusivity, the Birkin handbag has become a household name and well-known by the general public, both in name and by its distinctive design. I don't think the bag is that special. We'll pull it up in a second. But do you guys like the Birkin bag? I don't, I don't really like it. I, I see better bags. But anyways, that's why I'm not rich enough for this, okay? Despite the price and exclusivity, the Birkin handbag has become a household name and well-known by the general public, both in name and by the distinctive design. Since, an early, since as early as 2000, Hermes has expanded millions of dollars in the United States advertising the Birkin bag. Um, as a result of such advertising since 2000, Hermes has sold thousands of Birkin bags. The Birkin handbag is an icon of fashion. A September 2021 Vanity Fair article noted that there is a kind of fashion object so long lasting, so tirelessly wanted by its name becomes recognizable and metonym, a metonym for the brand that for the brand that made it. The Air Jordan, the Love Bracelet, few brands successful, though they I don't like how they write. It's making me not be able to read. Not that I could read any other day, but today I feel worse. Okay, few brown successful though they may be attain that kind of saturation. Okay, defendants illegal tying with the Birkin bag. So we're gonna talk about how they're how are they messing up. Okay, we get that they're a famous bag. We get that it costs a lot of money. We get that it's exclusive. But how is making an exclusive bag a bad thing? They're gonna tell us. Okay. The unique 
desirability, incredible demand, and low supply of Birkin handbag gives defendants incredible market power. Defendants implemented a scheme to exploit this market power by requiring consumers to purchase other ancillary products from defendants before before they will be given an opportunity to purchase a Birkin handbag. With this scheme, defendants were able to effectively increase the price of Birkin handbags and thus the profits that defendants earn from Birkin handbags. Birkin handbags cannot be purchased from defendants through the Hermes website. Instead, consumers can only purchase Birkin handbags from defendants by physically going into a Hermes retail store. However, unlike most consumer products and most other products sold by defendants, consumers cannot simply walk into Hermes into an Hermes retail store, pick out a Birkin handbag they want, and purchase it. Birkin handbags are, are never publicly displayed for sale at the Hermes retail stores. Indeed, it is often the case that there are no Birkin handbags at all at a Hermes retail store, or if there are, there are only one, two, hour, or at most three Birkin bags um, in the store. But even if there are Birkin handbags at a particular Hermes retail store, the handbag will not be displayed on the sales floor for the general public for us brokies. Um, <laughs> in fact, most consumers will never be shown. Yeah. <laughs> I think we fall in this category, guys. In fact, most consumers will never be shown a Birkin handbag at Hermes retail store. Typically, only those consumers who are deemed worthy of purchasing a Birkin handbag will be shown a Birkin handbag in a private room. The chosen consumer will be given the opportunity to purchase the specific Birkin handbag, which they are shown. Consumers cannot order a Birkin, this one has a typo, a Birkin, a Birkin handbag in the retail location. For all practical purposes, there is no way to order a bag in the style, size, color, leather, and hardware that a consumer wants. So it's exclusive. Anybody and everybody just cannot have these Birkin bags, right? You have to be somebody. And by being somebody, I mean buy a bunch of their other little crap that they sell in their store. Not crap, sorry, their items. (laughs) Free, do not get kicked off YouTube this year. Um, (laughs) You have to buy their other items, right? In order to even be offered the opportunity to even look, to lay your peasant eyes on this Birkin bag, you first have to spend umpteen thousand dollars in our store on little trinkets and shoes and scarves and, and furniture for your for your couch, okay? You cannot have a Birkin without buying all of this other junk that we sell. <laughs> And then when you are able to buy a Birkin, it's not like you can like get it and then match it to your style or anything like that. They might have a freaking snakeskin green and purple Hermes bag available for you. And it's like you have to take it because it's unique and it's rare and it's a specialty bag. And if you deny it, it's a potential that they'll never show you a freaking bag again. Or you have to start your climb up the ladder over from the bottom. That's what I assume. I don't know. I've never been to Birkin. I don't know if they make you start off from the bottom um, if you turn down the Birkin bag. So let me actually pull up some Birkin bags for you. I just don't think they're that unique, but maybe they are. I mean, it looks like a freaking bag to me, but you know, maybe I'm too poor. Maybe I am too freaking poor. Okay. So here is a Birkin bag. I'll make it bigger than me. It's just not something I want to spend my money on. Like these are not Birkin bags, but this freaking looks like a freaking Birkin bag. This one looks like a Birkin bag. Is this one? No, this one also looks like a Birkin bag. I just don't see. And like these ones, these are supposed to be like the specialty bags, but it's, it's a freaking snake skin. Who's wearing snake skin anymore, but you're stuck with it. You're stuck like this crocodile, red crocodile. And it like doesn't even look like the heather is the heather. The leather is holding up that well. Why do I talk mess about everything on this channel so bad? Purple, okay, but purple snake skin. Like what if I just want a, a plain purple bag? I can't even get that. If purple snake skin is all they have, that's all they freaking have. Or if you want a freaking purple bag on all they have is a freaking orange one, you have to take that one. Or you don't have to take it, but you probably won't be offered another one if you don't take it. And that's one way to kind of guilt people into buying the bag too. It's like, well, if I don't buy this one, then they're not going to offer another one to me. So it's an interesting model. I'm familiar with it with like watches and stuff, 
But a Birkin bag and like the color and like everything, I don't know. I don't know. It's just not that great to me, but maybe I just don't have any style. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to jump back into this because I think I'm pretty much almost done with the facts part of this. And then I'll jump into y'all's chat and see what y'all have to say about this. Okay, let's get back into it. Okay, they can't be purchased from the website. Okay, let's see. Where did I stop at? Okay, typically only those consumers who are deemed worthy of purchasing a Birkin bag will be shown a Birkin handbag in a private room. The chosen consumer will be given the opportunity to, per per to, to purchase the specific Birkin handbag which they are shown. Consumers cannot order Birkin handbags uh, at the retail location for any, okay, we already covered all that anyways. Okay, Hermes Sales Associates. Here we go into more of the exclusivity. Hermes Sales Associates are tasked by defendants with selecting those consumers who are qualified to purchase Birkin handbags. Imagine not being qualified to like, you know, save a life and become a doctor, but being qualified to purchase a Birkin. <laughs> Why well, do I have a feeling that these qualified consumers, all of that is probably a little racist? Uh, I, I just have a feeling about that. These sales associates are directed by defendants to only offer Birkin handbags to consumers who have established a sufficient purchase history or sufficient purchase profile. With defendants and defendants ancillary products, such as shoes, scarves, belts, jewelry, and home goods. Only once a consumer has a sufficient purchase history or purchase profile with defendants, will the consumer be offered the opportunity to purchase a Birkin handbag. Defendants have designed the compensation structure. This one's good. They designed the compensation structures of sales associates to ensure that the sales associates follow defendants' policy of only selling Birkin handbags to consumers who have sufficient purchase history and ancillary of ancillary products. Hermes sale associates are paid by the hour and also receive a commission on their sales. The commission rates paid the commission rates paid by defendants to sales associate differs based on the type of product sold. Sales associates are paid three percent on ancillary products such as shoes, scarves, belts, jewelry, and home goods. They are paid one point five commission on non Birkin handbags, and they receive no commission whatsoever on the sale of Birkin handbags. I wonder freaking why that's the freaking most expensive bag you got. But also so that you don't give the bag to the peasant just because you want commissions. You're not easily like persuaded just because you want the commission to sell it to like a brokey, right? That's <laughs> so to, to prevent you from selling Birkin bags, actually, we're just going to give you zero compensation if you do sell one, okay? So don't give it to the brokies, give it to the rich people that we like, okay? Um, although Hermes sales associates receive no commission on the most valuable and sought after products sold by their employer, they are instructed by defendants to use Birkin handbags as a way to coerce consumers to purchase ancillary products sold by defendant for which the sales associates receive 3% commission in order to build up the purchase history required to be offered a Birkin handbag. So basically the way it works is that you go into a store and you say, hi, my name is Brie. I would like to buy a Birkin bag. And they say, oh, well, that's wonderful, Brie. Let me look you up. Okay. You don't have any purchase history here. So instead of you getting a Birkin today, how about you get these little ugly shoes that we sell? Um, I don't, didn't really come in here for shoes. I would really like a Birkin bag. No, mm -mm, we're not going to give you a Birkin bag, but this scarf looks nice on you. So take the scarf and then next time you come, then maybe we'll offer you a Birkin bag. And then all the rich people go, oh, yes, okay, I would just take the scarf. Like you went in there for a purse. <laughs> This is not Target. You don't just find things, let the things tell you what you want to buy. <laughs> you go in Hermes, you let the associates tell you what you're going to buy. <laughs> this is not freaking Target, okay? This is not three, five, maybe $20. This is thousands and thousands of dollars. And you're telling me instead of getting a purse, I have to get a funky scarf, a scarf, maybe even a keychain for $500, right? 
But um, that's basically the way it worked. And then you come and you give them their 3% for the scarf. And then you give them their 1.5 for a little ugly bag, some other designer bag that they have in there. Okay, and then finally you build up to the Birkin and they're not as persuaded to sell the things to you because they don't get any commission. But they sell it anyways because you built up a purchase history with them. I think that's a stupid structure. I I get why they do it because they don't want the employees just saying, oh, well, you have to have a purchase history and then someone going, but you know, if I buy a Birkin bag, that's more um, commission for you. And they're like, oh, actually it is. Let me just sell it to you, peasant. (laughs) Not calling anyone a peasant, but I'm just thinking how, how it would feel to be in one of these stores. I don't even think it will be a fun experience for someone like me. But anyways, um, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. Definitely interesting. Let me know what y'all think about that. Okay. Let me finish up this section and then I'll get into the chat. And then let's see, the 3% commission. And then in this way, defendants are able to use their sales associates to implement defendants' Ill- illegal tie-in arrangements. So Oh, sorry. I didn't show it to y'all. It was just one sentence. But so they basically tell their associates, sell these smaller things because you get more commission. But for the big thing that you could get a lot of commission on, you get no commission. So sell them these little things first is basically what they're saying. Okay. So let's get back into the chat. We got Bossy B. Where you at, girl? Where you at? Okay, it looks like we have a $5 super chat. Thank you, Deacon Fado. I won't do the horns. <laughs> I will not do the horns. Thank you for the $5 super chat, Sam. I'm always reminded of Simpsons episode when Marge got a handbag. I don't watch The Simpsons, so I don't know exactly what you're referring to, but thank you. Definitely appreciate the super chat. Also see that you have been a member for 20 one month shout out to deacon fatal 21 months with the brie hive i appreciate it thank you so much for supporting the channel oh my gosh i'm getting like a little teary-eyed when i was little i wasn't like emotional over stuff like that like happy tears i didn't have happy tears okay only cried when i was sad but now that i'm older i feel like oh tira thank you so much for supporting the channel i'm saying i have a vintage coach um bag somewhere I don't like these. I don't like the, I mean, it's not that I don't like the Birkins. I just don't see the $10,000. I don't see it. And maybe it's because it's like the craftsmanship and making the bag and all of the things. But I mean, I guess if I had the money, I would buy it. Cause my mom, my mom is like, oh, I don't see the purpose of your bags. Like how much did that one cost? And I'm like, my bag, not $10,000. I have a really nice Burberry bag that was $600 and I use it and sling it and all the stuff and the leather is still holding up like really well and I've had it for two or three years now. So like I would spend money like that, but like $10,000 for that little ugly bag? No. My bag is cute. It gets compliments everywhere I go. Anyways, let me get into the chats before we are not able to cover what I want to cover today. We already got pushed back because of technical difficulties and now we are trying to catch up here again thank you to sandy for the five boss attorney Bree memberships we got chelsea b saying not a huge kardashian fan but i do think she tries to keep them out of the public a little more than him i think that i don't think so i think that she tries to get them to make like especially north to make money for north or for her so i, I don't think so i think she puts them As far as like working, she puts them in the limelight a little bit more. But as far as like just being around him, then I would say he put them in the limelight a little more. So I guess agree and disagree. Small says anyone can make a school because the U.S. doesn't value education. I mean, look at it. Chelsea B says the Birkin people sounds like the horror movie. It does. Defense Moore says, we're not worthy. We're not. We're brokies. <laughs> Kat McGowan says, they're not even pretty. I don't like the bag. I mean, it's, I, it's not that I don't like the bag. Let me stop saying that. It's not that I don't like the bag. I just don't think it's worth the hype. Kat McGowan says, if I was rich, I totally own a Dior, but not a Birkin. And I think there's so many other bags that are more afford- affordable that look better, in my opinion. Like my Burberry, I think it looks way better than these bags. My 
obsession with Burberry is the plaid. And I know it's so basic. I know it's so basic, but I love the plaid. I love the plaid. Charlene Anderson says Jane Birkin, who the bag was named after, passed away a few months ago. Oh, that's sad and good um, information. Thank you for letting us know that. Um, but people are still fighting over her name. So that's a good legacy for her. Sandy says, I've never heard of them. The Birkins or the Hermans? Which one? Carolyn Lower says, this is my first time hearing about these bags. Really? I probably learned about them around COVID time. Um, my husband is a little bougie. So he's into like that kind of stuff. And then like the city girls started rapping about it, getting a Birkin, whatever they be saying in those songs, right? And then and then Cardi B talked about a Birkin. And, it, and that's the, how I learned about Birkin bags. The young ratchet rappers and my husband taught me about Birkin bags probably around uh, the pandemic. Um, so welcome to the knowing about Birkins Club now. Katari says they're the hilar um they're the hilarious, overly expensive, but not exactly pretty bags. They're like they remind me of no offense, but like a very old, maybe like something that your grandma would carry. It reminds me of like an elderly person's bag. Uh Mountain Princess 2000 or 207 says, I can afford the bag. Can you? I can afford the bag. Can you imagine the furniture? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go on their website. I should have just covered this one lawsuit. I thought it wouldn't be enough because it's only 17 pages. But yeah, the chat is loving this. <laughs> um, Ohio Palm Mom says, I buy my purses from the Humane Society thrift store. And they're probably still in good condition because there's a lot of bags that really hold up. Like you don't need this Birkin bag. And the thing about the Birkin bag too it's like a lot of people don't even carry it on a regular basis because it's so expensive. Charlene Anderson says that's how they got into bags. And yes, the saddles are trust expensive. I, uh, I know they're going to be expensive and that uh, riding horses is a rich people sport. So I'm sure they are like bougie and make fun of the people that don't have the Hermes saddles. Okay. I would be one of the ones without the Hermes saddle though. But literally riding horses, in my opinion, is a rich people sport. Carolyn Hallower says, probably brought from the same people who get Donald Judd's furniture. <laughs> yeah, go get the fake Birkins, y'all. Get it from DH Gate. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's made in the same factory. <laughs> Jill says, I went into the store in Vegas once that had Prada shoes and bags. I went to see and was watched by the salespeople the whole time. It's the most uncomfortable thing ever going in those stores. And they're like, mm, do you need help? Do you need help? I'm like, can I see what's going on? I feel like the I feel like the people on Friday after next and they ended up stealing. So I guess I see why they why they watch people. But um no, I, I feel you on that deal, Jill. Uh, Brian and Jill says, expected to hear them say, um, ma'am, you aren't wearing you aren't wearing clothes that say you can afford to be in this store. I don't think they will say that. They'll be like, have you ever shopped here before? <laughs> Do you own any Prada? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think they'll say that. Kimmy Locker says to Jill, I would have juked like I was about to run or something just to see what they would do. That's what I'm saying. People, when you're, when you're being watched and you like make a scene for them not to watch you, that's like your perfect opportunity to steal. Is boss, is boss attorney Bree encouraging stealing? No. Do not go and steal from RMS, okay? Bree Hive, we are not stealing from RMS. Uh, Jewel says, rather have the money and no name leather bag. Yeah, you can get a nice bag from Ross for sure. Charlene Anderson says the Kelly was named after Grace Kelly. Thank you. Given the tips, given the tips or the, the info. Uh, Chelsea B says, on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they had a Birkin party. So definitely in that area. A, a whole Birkin party is insane. That's insane. Small says it's a bag like any other bag. Good quality, yes. Overpriced and hyped, also yes. Agreed. Could not say it better. Could not say it better. Jill says, um, probably not. Wasn't raised to waste money or care about labels. I just can't get behind a Birkin. And then you gotta make me buy a scarf first. 
<laughs> I don't know why I always go after the scarf. I, I clearly do, do not want an Hermes scarf, guys. I do not want that. <laughs> Uh, Carolyn Lois says, do rich people ever buy things because they like them or is it just in the name of status? I think a lot of stuff is in the name of status, but I also think that a lot of stuff is what you like. Because for me, I don't consider myself, I'm not rich by any means, right? Um, but I will spend money on a cute Burberry bag because I like the plaid. And when I look at Burberry bags and my husband's like, oh, you know, like this one, I'm like, no, it doesn't have plaid. <laughs> and it's like, you, Brie, you can go to the freaking fabric store and put plaid on your bag, but I want this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so some stuff is that I feel like people do like it and they're just okay with spending the money because they do like it. But other things I think are about status because Merkin, I can't get behind it, but maybe some people like that style. Maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, Kimmy Locker says to Carolyn Lower, money talks and wealth whispers. Yeah. And that's why that bag is ugly. No. <laughs> Charlene Anderson says, I like the Kelly better, but wouldn't spend the money on either. I'd rather use it to travel. Exactly. Love that. I love traveling too. I love traveling. I don't know. Like what's the most expensive bag? Go ahead and drop it in the chat. What's the most you would be willing to spend on a bag? And I'm talking good quality, a leather bag. If it was your favorite brand, how much would you be willing to spend on it? So think of your favorite brand and drop in the chat how much you would be willing to spend on, on that bag. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Lauren T says, I don't feel like it's that special either, especially at that price. It just also feels so unnecessary when I see people every day who can't even afford a roof over their heads. Yes, we are having problems affording houses and we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a bag that's going to sit in your freaking closet. Upside Down says, I'm a shoulder strap girl. I love those. Uh, Birkins don't do it for me. And I'd rather have a bag made from recycled materials. That's good. I love a good shoulder strap. Even like my handheld bags, they have to come with a shoulder strap or I'm not buying it. <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want one without any. I don't like it. I need it to be able to strap. All the happy squirrel says, hey, y'all, I was watching on my TV, but I couldn't figure out how to chat through with tech strikes again. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, welcome into the chat. Love that. Jazzy G says they wouldn't want that expensive bag to get stolen from the store. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I mean, people do steal from fancy stores. So, yeah, that makes sense. But still, I could go in the private room and still steal, right? <laughs> Carolyn Lower says it feels like a drug deal. It's almost like a drug deal. Charlene, uh, Charlene Anderson says, remember on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, when Kyle asked for an extra chair at a restaurant, it was for her Birkin. I don't re exactly remember that part of the show. I did also stop watching it a couple years ago, but I don't like to put my bag on the floor either, even if it's not like an expensive bag. Joe W says, are we even rich enough to look at this lawsuit? Probably not. <laughs> We're talking about things that are way out of our tax bracket, okay? Lauren T says, wow, how do they deem someone worthy? That's kind of disgusting. I feel like it has some discrimination in there. And also, they're saying a part of the worthiness is that you've bought things from us before. Um, let's see. Lauren T says, do they have to see a copy of my tax return first? No, <laughs> you just have to buy other junk. And if you can afford their other junk, they know you can afford the Birkin. If you're even laying your eyes on it, you can afford it. Because I really think, I really think if you turn one down, you don't get offered another one. You have to basically spend up your tab again to be offered another one. So you better have the money when you come in that store. All the happy girl says, that's a down payment on a house, a college education. Hell no. Agreed, agreed, agreed. I agree with you. Kimmy Locker says some people got way more dollars than cents. Yeah. And a lot of people have so much money, they don't even know what to do with it. So they start giving out Birkin bags for, for birthday presents, right? Deacon Fado says, um, oh, I already think I already read this one. I have a vintage coach bag somewhere. I don't like these. <laughs> yeah. And again, thank you for being a member for 21 months. Cheryl Reed says some people just want what they can't have. I don't want that. <laughs> Upside down says feed the world. I use the bag leftover from the uh, the drop offs. Yeah. Yeah. 
Jesse G says it's kind of it kind of gives me business briefcase. Yes, business briefcase vibes. Yes, it's like not meant for style. That's what I go for. Upside down says I make bags from recycled materials. That's awesome. There's so many creative people in the chat. All of all the happy scroll says I'm just angry that this kind of stuff happens so often. Uh, oh, it's so sought after. Sorry, um, this kind of stuff is so sought after. Um, people are out here doing money wrong for real. And they just have so much money. They can, they can do it. Joe, Joe W says first that <laughs> man, son is sharing down this. Yeah. <laughs> We're in rich people realm for the last couple weeks. Cat love dreaming. Pete says, wow, I need to rethink my sales strategy. Yeah. Make people buy other things first. You might get sued for it a couple years down the line, but right now it's working. Vince Mora says, I'll just get one at the next yard sale I attend, uh, that I attend a yard sale. Next time I attend a yard sale. Why can I not read? Oh no, you, you did type a yard sale twice. I'm like, what, why am I getting this from? Um, yeah. Cause sometimes there's like an estate sale and the people selling it doesn't, they don't even know what the value is of a lot of the stuff that they're selling because it's like their grandma or somebody died and they just give it away for basically free. American princess says there are print, there are plenty of fake Birkin bags. Yeah. <laughs> I can only imagine Joe W says exactly like Bree said, people without food or shelter jobless, but the rich wanted more bags. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big thing. People were still trying to, you know, remember everyone was doing like lifestyle content and trying to say like, Oh, there's a pandemic, but, but look at me, I'm still rich. It's like, bro, have some sense of like humanity. Um, there's other things going on in the world. Maybe like calm down. I don't know. But people, yeah, people were doing that a lot during the panini. Uh, Kim or Cat Love Dreaming Peace says, do you have to buy a Merkin before the Birkin? Is there a Merkin? <laughs> you probably have to build up from like scarf to shoe to keychain or no. Let's start with the keychain to scarf to shoe to a non-Birkin bag that is you still get a commission for for the associates and then up to the Birkin bag. I'm thinking. Again, thank you, Deacon Fatal, for the $5 super chat saying I'm always reminded of Simpsons episode when Marge got that handbag. Yeah. People are going crazy over the handbags. I got to get through the chats a little quicker. I don't know if we're going to make it to Kanye, y'all. No, we have to make it to Kanye. Is this going to be a marathon stream at this point? Oh, we're only an hour in. Let's see. Okay. American Princess says there are lots of videos about how to play the Birkin game. What's the Birkin game? Charlene says, and, and purchases in European stores don't count towards your purchase. Oh. <laughs> your purchase in European stores don't talk, don't count towards the purchase in the American stores. That's insane. Defense Moore says, um, I just pull out a lot of bills, fan myself and say, no, thanks. <laughs> oh, that sucks for you. <laughs> Josie B says their minds probably do think peasant, have to think peasant, have to. Um, Jill says, I'm a peasant, not offended at all. Don't want rich people, don't want rich people problems with you there. Shari says, but no commission, on the bed, not a place I would work. Like that's the biggest thing, the most expensive thing that you sell. And the way that you're going to try to convince me as to why I don't get commission on it is so that you don't think I'm a grimy person and sell peasants the, bur the bag. Like if I want to sell a peasant a bag, who cares? Give me the commission. American princess says I only want a size 30 to go leather or box leather with gold hardware. LOL. If it's not available, you cannot turn it down. You got to take the rainbow fur one. Okay. <laughs> Deacon Fiddle says bless for not playing the horns. No problem. I love the horns. Why you don't like the horns? Virgin Mix says, Mr. Tiffany said that what people buy is their business. What I sell is mine about not selling men's diamond rings. I think he was right. Exactly. If it's not for you, it's not for you. We're going to still talk mess about it on the Bree Hive, but I'm not going to not going to buy it. That's for sure. Oh. <laughs> uh, American Princess says, I heard that they are handmade and it takes like 48 hours to make one i heard 48 hours is not that long that's like what a work week 
You can make one in a week. Not like the freaking La Manza table, La Masana table, Manzana table. Ma I forgot what it was called, but not like that table. That takes like two years and it's $98,000 <laughs> or $90,000. Uh, but yeah, no, that is still a long time and handmade is difficult, but eh, I guess I'm sure they're not making, they're not paying the people with the skill $10,000 for that bag. But I guess they also have to buy the leather. I don't know. I don't think it's $10,000 worth. Um, all the happy girl says, oh, Brie, you think they're a 10K sweet summer child? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to look it up. Okay. Are they at least on the Hermes website? How much is a Birkin bag? I'm thinking like resale. They tend to be a little bit um, more expensive. On resale, they just had to verify my device to go on their website. What the heck do they have going on? Kaylee Loisa says, yeah, if only if only be interested in bags for the resale value, LOL. Yeah, it's like an investment property at this point. Lauren T says, I have a Burberry bag as well. Anytime I have gone into one of their stores, no matter how awful I've looked, they have treated me well, even if I told them straight up I wasn't buying that day. Yeah. I haven't had any problems in Birk. I'm not Birkin. <laughs> I've never been to a Birkin or a Hermes store. But yeah, no, Burberry, I never have a problem with. Coach, I never have a problem with. Louis Vuitton is like on that edge. I never buy anything. I bought one thing from Louis Vuitton and that was shoes for my husband. But yeah, they're like, they're kind of on edge. Gucci is... Depending on the associate, they're on edge. A lot of the Gucci people in the store where I go to Gucci, um, they know my husband and they see me. <laughs> so they kind of see, they kind of know me. And I have a purchase history at Gucci. <laughs> I do have a purchase history there, but um, I haven't had any problems really with them. Maybe one time. And then, like, they were pissed because I bought something. I was like, ah, ha, ha, you didn't want to help me. <laughs> but no, Burberry is good. Mind Spasm says some of those bland bags cost 35000 Yeah. The briefcases, you mean? <laughs> Deacon Fatal, another $20 super chat. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Says when I look for bags, I look at what the least, uh, what is the least be snatched? And my vintage bags, I just want to go to the thrift store once and I get some cash from a very angry ranger. <laughs> that has happened. <laughs> well, thank you again for the super chat. Yeah, no, shopping for bags, it's tough. I haven't gotten one from a thrift store yet um, as far as like a luxury bag or anything. But yeah, no, thank you again for the super chat. It's, it's hard finding good bags. Charlene says, if you want to see some cool bags, look up Judith Lieber. Okay, I will look that up later. Uh, Mackenzie Carter Cameron says, I had a friend in high school that got her Prada bag stolen when we're in Europe. Uh, she also wrapped her first car around a tree the week after her parents bought it for her. That sounds tragic. She sounds like she has really bad luck. Really bad luck. Um... Ashley Bill Billwatt, I think I'm saying that right. Billwatt says, "I agree that the stuff is overpriced, but I still plan on buying an Hermes scarf this summer in Paris. I know I'm crazy. I cannot go for the scarf. I cannot go for the scarf, Ashley. <laughs> I don't even know what their scarves look like. I'm just like I'm not buying a scarf because I know it is at least a four hundred dollars, at least." Carolyn Lower says $30 is the most she would pay on a bag. Deacon Fiddle says zero dollars. How? You be you be stealing, huh? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not putting that out there on you. Um, Charlene Anderson said $100. Joe W says um, maybe $50 max to Briar Purse. Um, Kat McGowan said 1K if it lasts 20 years and I can make a and I can make my coffee. <laughs> make your coffee in the bag. <laughs> Uh, my spasm says three hundred dollars max. Okay, these are good prices. Good prices. Uh, Mountain Princess two hundred seven says my current purse is fifteen dollars, but I have spent three fifty on a hiking backpack. So priorities. But you need you need the hiking backpack if you're hiking. Don't buy a hiking backpack and then don't go hiking. That would be bad. But I'm thinking Mountain Princess means you do hike. 
Um, Cheryl Reed says 500. Jewel says 150. Okay. Uh, Jill says 100, but I never, but I never, my fave bag was $70 at the shop in Huntington Beach. Think I tipped the cab driver more. (laughs) That's good. At least we have like money conscious people in the chat. In the chat. That's good. Um, let's see here. We got bless mommy, uh, four saying one fifty. if it was a gift for myself, but even that is a lot. Let's see who else we got. Small says for a quality handbag. If I had disposable income, deaf under a thousand designer slash logo can't be visible. I carry a backpack because of all the medical stuff I have. That makes sense, um, to carry. So I rarely carry a handbag. And a lot of times they're not small. They're not big enough. And so I have a problem with buying bags that are big enough to fit my stuff. And then they're not small enough to fit, like to be cute with an outfit. It's so bad. Uh, Small says like 500 to 800 is fine for an investment piece that can be passed down. Anything above that, I'm not doing it. Uh, Mackenzie Carter Camera says, "Does does luggage count and do they have a warranty? I don't think I know of any bags that have a warranty, at least like designer bags. I don't think they, do they have warranties? I don't think so. Just me MD says no more than a hundred dollars. And that's pushing it. My designer bag was a graduation gift from daddy and I hardly carry it. (laughs) Got to get those, get those presents. Most of my bags come from presents that my husband buys because he's a bougie guy. So he likes bougie things and he wants me to have bougie things. So he buys most of my bags. I think the most that I've spent on a bag, I think it was like twelve hundred dollars. Um, but it's a pretty nice bag. It's a nice bag. And then my six hundred dollar ones. That one's a nice bag too. All my bags are. I like all my bags. Okay, I like all my bags, but I've only bought two. <laughs> I've only bought two of those nice bags. So, um. I guess if it's something that I really want, I would probably do 2000, but it has to be like good leather, good quality, hold up well. I can use it for a really long time. I really take care of my stuff. I don't damage things. I don't break things. I don't scratch it up or anything like that. So for me, I know it's going to last me a while. So I would probably max spend 2000 on myself. I would probably max let Alpha spend like 5,000 on a bag for me, 5,000 on me. Um, but we're not there yet. We are not there yet. And Joe W says, I like shoes better. I splurge on tennis and hiking boots make sense. I like shoes too. Uh, sentient dreamer says I use a better bag bag. It's, uh, it's have a backpack and also has, it has so many pockets. That seems cool. Upside down says the thieves walk Thieves walk in with knockoffs and trade up. Interesting. That makes a lot of sense, though. Joe W. says, honestly, I need a new purse. I'm a new mom and need something that is not a diaper bag, but functional. <laughs> Love that. When I find this unicorn, I'll share. No, that that sounds very necessary. Maybe you should make it. Maybe you should make it. Vince Moore says, they make us try to lift Thor's hammer. <laughs> Bridget Mix says, Hermes wants to control their image. The image of their most famous product, we don't have to shop there. We are not shopping there. We are just talking about the case. Mackenzie says, I'll probably spur, I'll probably spur, uh, Brie, learn how to talk. I'll probably splurge on a bag, a rug, <laughs> for a bad rug long before a designer purse. Yeah. Rugs are expensive. Rugs are really expensive. I learned that when shopping for my house. Virgin Mix says Birkin bag was named after the ultimate it girl of the 1960s. It looks like a 1960s bag. No offense to anyone in, born in the 1960s, but it does look like a design from the 1960s. It's basically like not up with the times, in my opinion. Jane Birkin's no business type. She, uh, Mackenzie Carter says, I heard Gucci luggage can survive the apocalypse. Really? <laughs> I don't have any of their luggage. Jill says, question, is the bag related to Birkenstock shoes? IDK. I don't think so. 
It was named after the lady that they've mentioned above. Cat Love Dream and Peach says, I could see paying even $800 on a whole set of really nice suits. Yeah, suitcases are expensive now too. I remember like when I was younger, suitcases used to be like 50 bucks. Now to get like the big one, it's like over $100. And Ross, at Ross, you're supposed to be on discount. Like, why is it so expensive? <laughs> Peggy Ridden says, for a classic style that will last for years, $350. That's a good price. Ashley says Birkins are cheaper new than resale. Yeah, people hike up the price on resale. Charlene says Birkin have sold up to 500 k half a million buckaroos for a god darn purse. For a purse that someone probably already wore already. Kimmy says, don't forget to like the stream, Brie Hive. Yes, of course, if you haven't already. I've been going, going, going. We're at 78 likes. Our like goal for the stream is 100 like so if you haven't hit the like button please do it does help us out in the algorithm helps us get more friends and maybe it will help us stay on track one day <laughs> love that defense Moore says you have you have to adopt the bag like a cabbage pack kid yeah it costs as much as a kid okay lauren t says louis vuitton has always turned up their nose when i've walked in so i only went in once not a fan of their stuff anyways thankfully yeah they have like this $5,000 purse in there. And for the love of me, I cannot figure out why the purse is $5,000. But they said it's because it's like made out of cow skin or something. I'm like, okay. Or like a, a special cow. I don't know if it's a special cow, but yeah. Anyways, <laughs> Cat Love Dreaming Peach says, somebody give Brie an Hermes scarf. I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Defense Moore says, my bag is an igloo lunchbox. Love that. So I can carry everything I need. Snacks included. Love that. Kelly Eloisa says, I always purchase expensive items with my Amex card for extra protection. Smart. That's smart. Time Lord says, Gucci bags come with a two-year warranty. I didn't know that. That's good to know. I have a couple. No, I don't. I know. Yeah, I have two, three, two in a fanny pack. Yeah, that's what I happened to Gucci. Uh, Diggy Vito says, I love my Care Bear. I would not want to care. I would not want my Care Bear to become a holder for cash. That being said, I would buy a Care Bear purse. I think that would be so cute. That would be so cute. Jazzy G said, Brie, I want to see the Burberry bag. I will go get it. It probably has like receipts in it, but <laughs> I will go get it um, shortly. Just Me MD says, the bag better be covered by insurance. Which one? <laughs> the Birkin bag, Mackenzie Carter. Cameron says, they are meant to last. That's the best argument I can make for these things. Yeah, they're meant to last. They are meant to last. And like, I take care of my stuff really good. So my stuff does last. And my husband gets mad all the time he's like you're not you don't even you don't even carry your bags i'm like i'm going to work like why would i take this bag to work <laughs> it makes no sense like why would i why do i need this to go to winko like, <laughs> mama jama says my only purse that has lasted 30 years was a handmade leather locally oh those are good like when you get things purse or made locally they tend to last better too uh, i ran a preschool and a mom traded for a one month tuition she let me design it that's awesome that's so cool i love creative people deacon fado says there is nothing wrong with the 1960s purse screams in 1970s coach owner <laughs> that was a bit aggressive i said no offense even when i say no offense there's still offense <laughs> I'm just saying the style, the style. And you say you like vintage purses. So, I mean, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> I will stop. Tanya <laughs> D says, I just got a little carry on Salmonite for 55 at Ross in Vegas. It has a USB port. So, um, so on it. So it was worth it. I still think that's a lot. Like the USB port. Okay. That probably does help. But like those little small rolly ones, I feel like they used to be cheaper than that. But I mean, I guess inflation, right? I, is that a good price? Maybe I'm tripping. Cheryl C said, I spent about 250 on a handcrafted lo locally made leather bag about 20 years ago. I still have it and it looks practically new. Love that. Yeah, the local stuff is, it, 
it's really handcrafted. Now I know Birkin says they're handcrafted, but I don't, I don't really know about that. I don't really know about Birkin like that. <laughs> Charlene says. These people who turn up their noses when you go to the store can't afford to shop there, so don't be intimidated. A lot of times, no. They cannot afford to even shop at the stores and not to be mean, but they can't afford to shop at the stores. Um, the thing is, is that they get paid and they get commission. And so if they look at you and they feel like you're not going to buy something and maybe they know that you're you're not going to buy something because you look like them and they know they're not going to buy something, um, it's it's interesting. I don't get my feelings hurt. I just don't spend my money there or I'll go give somebody else the commission if it's something that I really want. Uh, Lauren T says the Charlene Anderson. So true. I just don't go back to those places because I don't feel like I want to support a company that treats their customers like that. That makes sense. Makes sense. Kimmy Locker says, I think $55 is a good price for a carry on. I could have swore that used to be cheaper. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. Maybe it hasn't been cheaper than $55. I don't know. I might be wrong. I've been wrong before. <laughs> I have been wrong before. Okay, y'all. We have to get to the bottom of this lawsuit. But in order to do that, I need to fix my screen layout. Okay. So, okay, let's finish this up. We should be almost done with this. Uh, plaintiffs attempt to... Per oh, sorry, Bossy. Where you at? Where you at, Bossy? Okay, here we go. Plaintiffs attention. I can't read. Plaintiffs attempts to purchase a Birkin handbag. So now we get into what's going on. Why are they really suing? Plaintiff Cavallari has spent tens of thousands of dollars at Hermes and had been coerced into purchasing purchasing ancillary products in order to obtain access to Hermes Birkin bags based on the practices alleged herein. In or about September 2022, plaintiff contacted Hermes about purchasing another Birkin bag, but was told specialty bags are going to clients who have been consistent in supporting our business. So what, do I have to buy something every month? What's consistency to them? Plaintiff Cavallari understood she would have to spend more on ancillary products to obtain access to another Birkin bag. As a result, Plaintiff Cavallari was unable to purchase another Birkin handbag into September 2022. Boo freaking who? Boo freaking who? <laughs> she was unable to buy a Birkin bag in September 2022. Boo hoo. Who cares? Okay, <laughs> I guess we care because we're covering the lawsuit. But anyways, let's go on. In or about 2023, plaintiff Glen no Glen, I don't know how to say his name, Glenoga, we're going to call him, sought to purchase a Birkin handbag, but was counseled by defendant sell associate to pur purchase ancillary products in order to potentially obtain a Birkin handbag. Plaintiff Glenn, no Glenn, I can't say it, Glenoga made multiple attempts to purchase a Birkin bag, but was told on each occasion that he needed to purchase other items and accessories. As a result, Plaintiff Glenoga was not able to buy a Birkin handbag. <laughs> Don't we feel so sad for him? We feel so sad that he could not buy a Birkin bag. Boo-hoo. There's bigger freaking problems in the world, people. Um, plaintiffs are informed and believes and on that basis allege that defendants tied plaintiff access to purchase a Birkin handbag to a requirement that they spend more on other items pursuant to unlawful tying arrangement alleged here. And they go ahead and establish the class. Um, and then let's get a little bit into the claims for a relief violation of the Sherman, the Sherman Act. It says, as detailed below or detail above, defendants have unlawfully tied their Birkin bags to their ancillary products through their sales associates' incentive program. A market exists for both the tying and tied products, the Birkin handbag, and ancillary products, respectfully. My thing is, you don't have to buy these bags, though. Like, what? You don't have to buy these bags. Defendants has, and it's all by the same company. I can understand if it was like, Walmart was like, oh, in order to be able to get access to Target, you have to buy things in Walmart. But no, it's all in the Hermes store. So if you don't want to buy the stupid scarf, don't buy the stupid scarf. And you just don't get a freaking Birkin bag. And like, this is not a need. This is not food. This is not water. It's a freaking purse. Okay. For you to flex online. 
Get over it. Okay. Anyways, defendants have su- sufficient economic power in the time in the tying market, the Birkin handbag to affect competition in the tied market and ciliary products. Um, defendants willfully and intentionally engage in predatory and exclusionary and anti-competitive conduct with the design purpose and effect on the unlawful maintaining its market and or monopoly power. You don't have to buy from them. The availability of the Birkin handbag is conditioned on customers purchasing ancillary products from defendants. In other words, consumers are coerced into purchasing ancillary products from the defendants by virtue of wanting to purchase a Birkin handbag. This is anti-competitive tying conduct. The tying product, the Birkin handbag, is separate and distinct from the tied product. The ancillary, <clears throat> sorry, the ancillary product required to be purchased by consumers because consumers such as plaintiff have alternative options for the ancillary product and per- and would prefer to choose among them independently from their decision to purchase a Birkin handbag. Defendant's unlawful tying arrangement thus ties two separate products that are in separate markets. Defendants have sufficient economic power in the market for Birkin handbags to coerce at least some consumers into purchasing ancillary products from defendants. Defendant conduct effects <clears throat> effects has affected um, a not insubstantial volume of commerce significantly more than de minimis. So you plaintiffs are suing Birkin because, or suing Hermes because they wouldn't let you buy a Birkin bag. So then you're going to sue them. You're going to get money from them. And then you think they're going to let you buy a Birkin bag. Do you still want the Birkin bag or do you not want the Birkin bag anymore? Because I don't think they're going to, you're never going to get enough purchasing power. Okay. To buy this stupid handbag. They can put limits on who buys their stuff. Okay. And so a lot of the other actions, a lot of the other causes of action go down that same line of, oh, well, you're not letting us buy these. Um, That's not fair. I don't know how you would be competing in the market by showing that the next person on the street that I have a Birkin and so do you. Don't get it, but it is what it is. Okay. That's as far as we're going to go into that law. So we have some more chats to go through and then we're going to go ahead and jump into Kanye West because we are an hour and a half in and we haven't even touched Kanye West yet, okay? Y'all, my throat is going to clog. Actually, let me pause. Let me go and get my um purse. You guys wanted to see the purse. The purse. Let me, let me put my camera off. Okay, we are back. Camera. Boom. Okay, we are back. We got the purse and we got the bossy the bee coming in. So this is my little Bur- Burberry purse. It's like plain. I like the plainness. I don't like anything like how small says she doesn't want like the big logos. I don't like the big logos. But the cuteness is on the side with the plaid. I freaking love this. And then, like I said, it's like the little handbag. I want one. I've always wanted one where you're like, oh, you could be cutesy. But boom, the strap. The strap. Like, I do not lie, guys. It has to have the strap. It has a little handbag if I want to do it like that. And it has that little plaid on the side. I love this purse. I sling it everywhere. It's been to the club. It's been to the bars. It's been to the festivals. It's been all down San Francisco. And it looks brand freaking new. And I've had this purse for like three years now. It looks brand freaking new. And like, you can see I have a bunch of junk in it. I open it like this. So like this should be loose, but it doesn't get loose. I just, whatever, but it's 
in pristine condition condition and it was a six hundred dollar bag and i've got my six hundred dollars worth of the bag in my opinion so there's that for those of you that wanted to see the bag um okay let's see let's get back into the chat we got deacon fatal with a five dollar super chat thank you <laughs> saying okay real tip ross is one uh is a wonderful place to shop at and tj maxx okay i'm done but seriously no i love ross i love ross like probably half of my wardrobe is ross that winnie the pooh shirt that y'all saw me on the live stream with the other day that was from ross i love ross love ross not a super big tj maxx fan but i love ross <laughs> uh chelsea b says rich people problems precisely rich people problems Lindsay says i suffer from liking bougie perfumes <laughs> not you suffer you know what my husband bought me the i don't even know what kind of perfume it is and then like as soon as my grandma smelled it she was like oh i love your perfume da, da, da. and i'm like um, I don't know if that's like a good thing or not. Like, I don't even know. I think it's like Vince Com something, something that Alpha bought. Um, but yeah, I'm not like super into perfumes because they used to give me headaches. I literally only have one perfume. But anyways, let me finish your comment saying I suffer from liking bougie perfumes, not one for bags or other stuff. But please, nobody ever leave me unsupervised near the perfume counter in a girly, a girl in or like, I don't even know how to say it, but Vlari's, um, but Gari? store no i i can't with the i mean i can wear perfumes but i cannot pick them out to save my life so good for you Lindsay. uh we have that simona with a super sticker thank you very much 199 super sticker i definitely appreciate it i won't do the horn because that bothers deacon fatal <laughs> but i thank you thank you so much for supporting the chat Charlene Anderson says another Birkin bag. So she already has one. Yes. She wanted another one. She was like, they won't let me buy another one. <laughs> Come on, girl. There are real problems in the world. This, so that Simona says, clearly, I don't know how to send a super chat, but just wanted to say you rock. Thank you very much. I definitely appreciate it. I received it. And I, like I said, thank you for supporting the channel. Cat Love Dreaming Peach says, crazy that companies like your money is not enough for us. We want loyalty. We want the blood of your firstborn child. <laughs> That's what they're like. They're like, geez, you want me to put my baby in the bag so you can sell the baby in the bag to someone? Like, geez, Louise. Cat McGowan says, I've never gotten several, um, I've gotten several coach bags off of eBay for cheap, then dyed them and made them look cute. Oh, nice. I like coach bags. I have a couple of those too. I remember when I got my first law firm job, like, cause coach was like super name brand to me. That was like the top brand that I knew about. I went and I bought like three, <laughs> I went and bought like three coach bags on one day. I spent like $500. <laughs> And I was like, oh, I got my coach bags and blah, blah, blah. And then I met my husband and he was like, a coach bag? That's not designer. Like, coach is designer to me. Like, do not tell me what is and what isn't designer. I still wear them. I have like a little coach fanny pack. It's so cute. Like, I love fanny packs. My coach one is like the best. He got me a good, no, I'm not going to say that on the live stream, but he also got me a fanny pack. But my coach one, my coach one, hands down. Hands down is all I'm going to say. Um, my mom tried to like steal it from, she's like, Ooh, I like this. Can I have it? I'm like, no, no, you cannot have it. <laughs> you cannot have it. But coach bags are good too. Deacon Fatal says there is now way there, there is now way these bags or there's no way. Okay. There's no way these bags are that cute. I showed it. I don't think it's that cute. Charlene says, sad that they feel the bag is so important. Right? Right that you're willing to sue because they won't, you're suing them because they won't let you buy something. Do you really think they're gonna let you buy it now that you sued them? <laughs> or do you just not want it anymore? Cheryl Reed says, I can't believe they would sue. What a waste of time and money. Like just find a different bag. There's better looking bags than that. Upside Down says, shaking my head. So buy a different overpriced bag, muffins. <laughs> Deacon Fiddle says keeping up with the Joneses mess and they can't because one didn't even want to buy the little other products they just wanted the Birkin bag off rip probably told people oh I'm so popular I can get a Birkin bag without buying the other junk and then Birkin was like no <laughs> you have to buy our other junk 
<laughs> Mountain Princess 207 says, could you imagine at the grocery store I have to buy in produce to get the meat off? <laughs> that would actually be a very good system because a lot of people do not eat their freaking vegetables. And then like stores have vegetables and they go bad because nobody buy them. That is actually a really good market <laughs> to help with the obesity problem in the U.S. <laughs> if we, they made us buy vegetables before we can get to meat. I don't think that's a bad idea. That does not sound like a bad idea to me at all. <laughs> Carolyn Lewis says, what would the damages even be? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the damages are going to be. They want compensatory damages and they also want punitive damages. So you want me to pay you back for you not buying a Birkin bag? Like, what do we pay you? Like your gas money to get there, your phone bill because you called us. Like, what do we pay you back? What did you lose out on from not having a Birkin bag? Imagine these are like influencers and said, Oh, I was going to get this brand deal, but because I didn't have a Birkin bag, they turned me down. <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> it's so weird. You know what? All I have to say, sorry for any of the youngsters in the chat, but all I have to say is I feel like these people are Gen Z. That's all I have to say. I feel like they're Gen Z. They won't let me into their club, their Birkin bag club. <laughs> and then the other lady, you already have one. Like, what are you crying about? You want another one? You only have two arms. You're going to wear one on each arm. <laughs> Maybe they forced her to buy the fuzzy rainbow one and she wants a cooler one now. I don't know. <laughs> Deacon Fado says the lawsuit is actually upsetting me because what the F? Like, what are you even, what are we even crying about here? Lauren T says, I wonder if they could have bought the requisite amount of ancillary products plus the Birkin for the price this lawsuit will cost them. <laughs> yeah. Probably, <laughs> but a lot of class action lawsuits, they don't have to pay until like they win. So they may not have to pay anything. It'll be the law firm losing money. Kimmy Locker says to Lauren T, at this point, I bet it's an ego thing as much as a financial thing. It has to be influencers or it has to be Gen Z or a combination of both. Uh, Charlene Anderson says, OMG, I cannot deal with the entitlement. It's an effing bag. It's a bag and you're mad. It's like they won't let me in their club, so I'm going to sue them to let me into their club. They're just going to close down a club because they don't want you in it, okay? <laughs> Shari says they will never get that back. Exactly. That's where I'm at with it. <laughs> Charlene says no shoes, no shirt, no Birkin. <laughs> they should put that up in the window. That's a good one. <laughs> Chelsea B says Hermes must have a pretty ironclad policy in place with them being that um, that extreme. I'm thinking that's what you were going to say. Deacon Fatal says, if I ever, if I ever had handcrafted bags, I would make it a point out of spite not to sell to them, <laughs> to these plaintiffs or to Hermes. Um, Chelsea B says Hermes must have a pretty ironclad policy in place for such an exclusivity. How do you even bring this suit forward? That's what I'm saying. This lawsuit has never come forward in this much time since 1837. They've been in business and no one has sued them for this because they don't care if they have to buy a bell pepper in order to get some chicken. OK, they don't care. They have the money. They can spend it. It's an exclusivity thing. Y'all are trying to break into their exclusivity. If you can't afford it, stay at home. I cannot afford it. I'm going to stay at home. Nor would I ever want to buy that ugly bag. And it's not ugly. Let me not say that. But nor would I want to buy that bag. Like, if you can't, if you can't afford it, stay home. Like me. Okay? I can't afford it. I don't want it. I'm, I'm going to stay home. I'm going to find something in my tax bracket. Uh, Peggy Reardon says, Brie, you need to get a BRB sign like Rob for when you need to leave. Yeah, I know. I need to get my life together. I do not have my stream set up all the way how I wanted to. <laughs> and I had a picture at first, but somehow it disappeared. Kimmy Locker says, oh, that little peekaboo plaid is cute. Thank you. No, I love the purse. I love it. Oh, cute. Thank you, Tanya. Deacon Fado says, cute. Thank you. Thank you. So it's like if you, you just... If you really want it, you spend on it, right? You you just spend on it. <laughs> Kat McGillan says, that's like the perfect size. Thank you. It, it is. Like, it can be a party bag. It can be a go-out bag. This bag has done it all. 
This bag has done it all in the last couple of years. Cheryl Reed says, love it. I love it too. Um, Lauren T says, I've always loved the that Burberry bag. It's so freaking cute. I've seen like one other person with this size because this one is like the mini one. They have ones that are bigger, but this one's like mini and it's like cute. I love it. I love it. And it just seems like a regular bag, but it's not. It's just cute. Uh, Jill says, oh, plaid on the side. Cute. Thank you. Lola Waddington says, well-maintained and beautiful purse. Thank you very much. I literally, I need to take care of it probably more. It was sitting on the floor in my closet. Not like under anything or anything, but it was like not on the shelf where it's supposed to be. So I maintain it to an extent, but I keep my closet pretty clean. So I guess it's not that bad. Dika Vito says, this strap is for a fight. <laughs> Gotta wrap around. <laughs> <laughs> just me empty says love the bag breed. thank you love it thank you thank you Q. thank you dicky fiddle says okay i do have many perfumes yes yeah, people splurge on the things that they want to splurge on right everyone has their thing everyone has their poison fine spasm says i'm a perfume snob too i have four different vents come that's the one i have that is what i have actually I have the Vince, the Vince Komodo. I, I know that's what it is. It smells really good. It does smell really good. But for me, with the perfume, like once I put it on, I can smell it when I put it on. And then after that, I can't smell it anymore. Is that normal? I don't know. But other people can smell it. So I guess it's, it's still good. MD says, I don't want to have um, perf perfume because I don't want to be reminded of this time of my life if I make it through. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, Cheryl C says, I am super sensitive to perfumes and they often give me a headache immediately. That used to happen to me. I started getting my favorite dupes from Nantucket Perfume Company and they smell the same, last longer and no headache. That's good. That's good. Ashley says, this is my first live. Found you through Rob Friday Night Fren Frenzy. You your live is a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much. Happy to have you here. How? Yeah, we get sidetracked it all the time because this was supposed to be like a two hour stream and now we're going to be like three hours probably or more. <laughs> Cat Love Dream and Peach says, OMG, I think put the baby in the bag is Belen. <laughs> oh, oh, that is Belen Tiaga. Oh, I forgot about that. They did do some weird stuff with kids, huh? Now, are we going to start boycotting these name brands? Because they are always up to some sketchy stuff. So <laughs> Kimmy Loggins says the prayer for relief asked that Hermans be enjoined from continuing those practices. No, no, that's their thing. I don't want, I do not want the plaintiffs to win here. I'm sorry. Even if it's a violation of the law, I don't get the antitrust stuff. So it, it may be a violation of a law, but no, leave them alone. You don't have to shop there, okay? Um, join from continuing the practices, pay restitution, damages, disgorgement to plaintiffs with pre and post judgment interest and cost and return. Disgorgement of what? The profits from Birkenbeck because they couldn't buy one? No. No. I didn't read that part, but no. <laughs> Uh, Kimmy Locker says, I don't know where they got the audacity, but they should put it back. Yeah, disgorgement, disgorgement, a profit on a Birkin bag that you could have bought, but no, you couldn't have because you didn't reach, you you weren't worthy. Look, now I'm on Birkin's side. <laughs> Boo-hoo, I can't buy a Birkin bag. I'm so sad. <laughs> Kimmy Locker says, yeah, okay, I got that one. Cat Love Dream and Peach says, sounds like your husband is worthy to get a Birkin, yeah. Probably in some stores. Yeah, he would be worthy. <laughs> Destin to be says, Alpha said, let me upgrade you. Oh, for the Vince Komodo, Komodo perfume. Yes, I bought this purse. I bought this one, but he he bought a lot of the other ones. So <laughs> uh, Small says, I can't imagine begging someone to spend my hard earned money with a company who doesn't want my business because of my social economic standards. That is like what? Exactly. But I mean... Are we in first grade that if someone tells you like you're a loser, you're going to get sad? Or there was like this one TikTok going around where this lady was like, my kid is being bullied because she doesn't have a Stanley cup. So I went and bought her a Stanley cup. And I'm like, are we making soft kids at this point? Like, are we? That's why I said this has to be like a Gen Zer. It has to be a Gen Zer because 
millennials and up, are we really suing for stuff like this? I feel like no. <laughs> we was taught if you're not wanted, don't go, right? I'm with you there. Cheryl C says, it wouldn't be produced, it wouldn't be produce to get dairy, dairy to get meats, meats to get processed foods and desserts. <laughs> oh, not the desserts, not the desserts. I would not last. I would not last in that economy. I need to get to the desserts first. <laughs> Good structure, though. Good structure, I think. If, if you can't afford, and I mean, no, that's not nice because for people that can't afford it, they can never have desserts. That's not nice. But I think at least, I think at least vegetables to meat. Because vegetables are not, they're pretty inexpensive. <laughs> I think that would kind of be cool, though. <laughs> Sharice says, oh, definitely, Brie, I agree about Gen Z. Has to be. I can't imagine anyone else, or like a young millennial, maybe, but anyone else, excuse me, I can't, I can't imagine this being like older people suing for this. Nessa Howard says, I bet Runkle could make a better leather bag. Agreed, probably could. The Vince Morris says, just buy the designer TP, $100 per square. <laughs> Uh, Carolyn, <laughs> Carolyn Lowry says in the wise words of Fergie, if you ain't got no money, take your butts home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then to sue someone to say, let me spend my money with you. No, <laughs> but I mean, is it all that? I mean, if it's discriminatory based on race, but don't get me wrong. You don't shoot the messenger here. But is it all that wrong from like, they're basically trying to treat this luxury item as segregation. I know it's, it's, a, it's a stretch to tie it together, but you know, black people couldn't go into the rest, white restaurants. We wanted to eat there. We wanted to sleep at their hotels. But it was also discriminatory. They would beat us up if we tried to go there. At least the Hermes employees are not beating you up for being broke and going to their store, right? Um... But it's almost like they're trying to treat buying a Birkin as being discriminated against. <laughs> You're not rich enough to buy this. It's like country clubs. You got to pay the price to get into the country club. So for Hermes, you got to pay the price to get to the Birkin bag, right? <laughs> Upside Down says the one percenters aren't letting you in the group because of your bag. You can't afford the lifestyle. Get a job. The fact that you have enough time to sue over this lets us know you're not the status that you're trying to be. Sorry, not trying to go in on the plaintiffs, but also going in on the plaintiffs. The Vince Morris says we splurge on things like food and bills. LOL. Love that. That's me. I would spend so much money on food just because I want to taste it. <laughs> you don't even have to eat the whole meal. I would just be like, I want to taste that. And I know I'm not going to eat the whole thing, but I would like to experience that. Like we're looking at this bag. $600, been wearing it for three years. I could go to a restaurant and spend $200 on just me and my husband because I wanted to try multiple dishes on the menu because I'm greedy. <laughs> I, I don't waste my food though. I do eat it even if it's leftovers. And people are like, oh, fancy restaurants, you're not supposed to take leftovers. F you, I bought it. I'm taking it home, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna eat my leftovers. Screw you. Um <laughs> No one should have ever gave me a YouTube channel. Like, seriously, every day I think about it. Who gave me a mic? <laughs> Who gave me a microphone? <laughs> but no, I would definitely splurge on food for sure. Bills is, you know, that's not, I'm not volunteering to pay bills. But also I learned the lesson hard of you got to use the heater. And the heater costs a lot of money. But you just got to pay that lot of money because you can't just sit in here and be cold. That's like a necessity. Lindsay says, yeah, going nose blind to your own perfume is common. Okay. Makes it, but it like goes away so fast. Uh, Lauren T says, yeah, it's normal. Your brain stops focusing on it because it's not worth the cognitive resources required to pay attention to something that isn't going to harm you essentially. Makes sense. Mine goes away really fast though. Gabriel George says, just join and I really like your new glasses, Brie. Maybe I'll sue <laughs> if I can't get a pair of my own. <laughs> Thank you. I love these. Like, these are like completely different for me. I love them. These are actually also Burberry, but I get like a discount. Um, 
I splurred on my glasses too because I'm blind as a bat and so I have to get like all the bells and whistles to make them look at least halfway decent or like halfway normal. Um, so I'm used to spending like 400, 200 to 600 dollars out of pocket on my glasses. Uh, this time I only spent like 200 though. So they are Burberry, but they're actually cheaper than my other ones, which are were coach frames. So, but I also got like an employee discount because my husband works for the company now. But anyways, either way it goes, <laughs> these are actually, I, I would say Burberry is my brand right now. Burberry is my brand right now. If I were to buy a designer brand, it's going to probably be Burberry. Um, but no, I got a pretty good discount on these because of the, you know, your, your vision insurance coverage on the frames. They, they, the frames aren't really that expensive. Um, let's see here. And again, thank you for the compliment. Uh, Chelsea B says millennials can't even afford houses in this economy. We're not out here with Birkins or trying to force someone to make us buy one or let them let us buy one. All the happy girl says we millennials are just trying to pay our rent and our student loans. Man, tell me about it. They're about to take some money out of my account tomorrow. <laughs> Can't love dreaming. Peach says so. On a serious note, the classist slash racist things okay in the consumer space for the super rich. Yeah, so it's like classes, classes equals racist to them. Like you're not rich enough to get this. But you're also not getting beat up about it. You just can't have the bag. It, it, that's okay. But for some people, it's not, I guess. Uh, Carolyn Lower says, we are like 10 ways away, oh, 10 likes away from our light goal. Are we? Are we? Are we? Let me see. Where's my mouse? Okay, here you go. We are at 91 likes, y'all, with 66 people watching live. So if you haven't hit the live button, please do. It does help us out in the algorithm. And we do have a like goal of 100 likes this live stream. So if you haven't hit the like button, please help us reach our goal by just, you know, thumbsing up the video. We're having fun over here. Also, if you are joining and you've never joined before or you're just joining and stopping by, please subscribe to the channel. I always forget to ask people to subscribe, but do subscribe. We have a lot of fun over here. You love it here. You're going to love it here if you don't. <laughs> um, all the happy girls. And also thank you for everyone that has already hit the like button. Appreciate, much appreciate you guys. All the happy girls says they aren't beating us pores out of their stores because they there are laws against that sort of thing. Right. Right. And is it discrimination? I, they're not alleging like any racism or sexism or anything like that. They're just alleging that I don't want to buy the other stuff before I can get to the Birkin. That's not fair. That's like being like, I want to go into your golf club without paying for the membership. Let me in. They're going to look at you and say, no, you, you, you can't sit here. <laughs> That's what Birkin is basically doing. You can't sit here. Upside down says alpha is going to be a nightmare. 12 year olds are already into wrinkle creams and body no, he's going to be a nightmare. Like, no, he just likes like expensive things. I hope that doesn't happen. I know that's hard about even deciding to have kids in this time period because there are so many kids that are like, you know, insecure and people like pressuring them to do stuff. When I was a kid and you didn't have something and somebody made fun of you because you didn't have something, you were supposed to crack a different joke back. Like, <laughs> or ignore them and move on, right? You got to talk, mess about them. It's like, okay, you don't got no light up shoes, suck for you. Like, if they're like, oh, why are you wearing those light up shoes? Um, you don't have light up shoes, that sucks for you. Like, <laughs> you make them second guess what their problem is, right? Right? Oh, you have a Stanley cup? That's for old people. Mm -mm. Stanley cups are for old people. Get you this unicorn Target tumbler because I think that's what the little girl had. Oh, you have a fake Stanley cup. No, I don't. I have a sparkly unicorn cup. I don't have a fake Stanley. Sorry. Like <laughs> you have to make them second guess if they're making fun of you or they're making fun of themselves. So there's that. Jewel says some 10, 10 year olds already own wrinkle cream adult stuff. That's so weird. I don't even have wrinkles. I don't even have wrinkles. I don't even have wrinkles yet. That's weird. Why are people buying their kids that kind of stuff? That's strange. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump over to the, um, what are we doing today? Kanye West lawsuit. Because we are, we got a lot to go through. That one was only like six pages of stuff we actually needed to get through. And we got like 20 
of stuff we actually need to get through on the other one. So let's go ahead and jump into Kanye West. Let me get my screens together first, Bree. Oh, I said I was going to go on the um, the Hermes website, actually. So let me do that real quick. Let's see if we can afford. Her. Okay, here it is. Okay, their website is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and make me small. Never mind, we're on Hermes. This is their website. Interest. Oh, this is pretty cool. Okay, there's a scarf for you guys. <laughs> I'm still against the scarf. Okay, fancy. Let's see. Women ready to wear. We got jewelry, got men's scarves, watches, fragrances, fashion jewelry, belt, no bur no passes or no purses. Okay, here we go. A T for two scarf. I said no less than four hundred dollars. They're five fifty. God, but at least you can wear it as like a shirt. That's interesting. So there's that. Women ready to wear scarf shoes, bags. Let's look at bags, bags and clutches, small leather goods. They're probably not gonna have any Birkins on here, huh? So even this her bag zip, it looks like a Birkin bag to me. Um, close enough at least. It's four thousand dollars. Guess that's not horrible. But they only have like four options of purses. Um, okay. And then what? Let's see about these these scarves. Silk scarves. Let's look at the silk one. That was pretty cool. That little horse bendy thingy. Yeah, five fifty. God dang, for a scarf. They're nice. They are nice. I I can give them that. They're very intricate. I'm not wearing that though. But I don't wear scarves, so who am I to judge? Um, just one for your hair. Okay, we got three ninety five for a ribbon for your hair. That's not too bad. And then they have a scarf ring for, you know, just $250. That's not, that's really bad. That's very expensive. Uh, this one's cool. Okay. So they don't even show us the Birkins online. We can't, we can't even see how much it's going to cost for a Birkin online. But they have all of these scarves, which have cool designs. I'm not even going to sleep on them on that. They do have cool designs, but... That's Hermes website. We're not going to go that deep into it. I thought they were going to tell us how much the Birkin bags were, but they're not. So that's the end of Hermes. Let's actually jump into Kanye West now. Okay. Share the screen. All right. We got Trevor Phillips suing Yeezys, Donda Academy, Kanye West, and all the other John Doe's who's going to get at it later if they need to be at it later. Okay. We have plaintiff Trevor Phillips complaint for damages and injunctive relief for discrimination in violation of the Fair Employment Housing Act for hostile work environment, harassment in violation of the FIA. I'm going to call it FIA. Retaliation in violation of the FIA. Failing to take all reasonable steps to prevent discrimination, harassment, retaliation, um, violation of the labor code for being a whistleblower, violation of the labor code, retaliation recording work for reporting work conditions, retaliation for disclosing unsafe working conditions, uh, discrimination for reporting working conditions. Geez, how many different ways? Uh, I guess they're different sections of the labor code. Wrongful termination and violation of public policy, intentional infliction of emotional distress, breach of express oral contract to pay wages at a certain amount. Now, we are deep into the live stream. So about an hour ago, I warned that this lawsuit does talk about a lot of discrimination, including racism against black people and Jewish people, and then also some discrimination against the LGBTQ community. I got it right that time. I always like mix up the Q and the T, but I think I got it in the right order that time. But anyways, it does talk about that type of stuff. So if you are sensitive to that, um, feel free to drop off now. We will see y'all on the next live stream. But if you are okay with hearing about it, that's my trigger warning. Wi-Fi, don't start acting up now. Um, <laughs> that's my trigger warning. It does talk about some pretty heavy stuff, some pretty weird stuff that he does as well too. But 
we've covered some crazy stuff on this channel anyway. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump into it. And again, if you haven't hit the like button already, please do. We are only six likes away from our like goal for the stream. So we can, we can get there. We can definitely reach it. Um, let me see here. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Boom. Okay, this is a long one. Look at this, y'all. <laughs> it goes all the way down to 42 pages. We are not reading 42 pages today, okay? We're citing codes. We're citing, citing cases. Let's get into the introduction. Oh, I forgot to kind of... Oh, this is going to recap for us if you missed the beginning of the stream. This is for the plaintiff. While employed by Kanye West aka Ye Ye and Kanye Yeezy fashion brand as well as K12 K through 12 kindergarten to 12th grade he's teaching Christian private school Christian private school Donda Academy Phillips suffered severe discrimination harassment and retaliation directly by Kanye West from the start of Phillips' tenure working in Yeezy and Donda, it was immediately apparent to him and others that Kanye treated the black staff considerably worse than white employees Black staff versus white employees. Why did they make that distinction with the wording? But sure, let's go with that. Even when class, even even when class was in session, Kanye would scream and berate black employees while never even as much as raising his tone at the white staff. Often Kanye targeted Phillips, a black man, not just with the desperate and harass, harassing behavior, but complete and utter disdain. On several occasions, Phillips also witnessed Kanye's one spew forth hate two profess anti-Semitic tropes and lies, three threaten the LGBTQ plus community, and even four on one occasion almost s actually stimulate himself. What? Oh, this stuff just gets weird. Already to already at a disadvantage because of his skin color, once Phillips pushed back against Kanye's bigotry and instructions to violate the law, he became an even bigger target. In return, Kanye responded mercil mercilessly with insistent with essence with essence with essence. Essent harassment. <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying that right. Uh, humiliation in attempts to both mentally control and destroy Phillips. Kanye's ill will towards the plaintiff ultimately culmin culminated in a vulgar lashing in front of the school children and their parents. Kanye even threatened Phillips with physical violence. Kanye's behavior demonstrates how he has a grown has grown accustomed to doing, getting, and saying whatever he wants. I am God, he crudely proclaimed on his song title. I am God on his most recent album, released February 2024. Kanye ordained his physical form king for getting away with his widely publicized xenophobia, crazy bipolar um, anti-Semit, and I'm still king. I'm they thought headlines was my kryptonite. I'm still the king. Yet in our society, no one is above the law, including self-proclaimed kings and gods. And in our society, racism, anti-Semitism, anti uh, and homophobia can have no home, much less find refuge in the beliefs of someone leading a school where malleable young minds are meant to soak up wisdom, not hate. Plaintiffs bring this action against defendants for economic, non-economic, and compensatory damages, prejudgment interest, punitive damages, and cost of and and cost and reasonable attorneys' fees, uh, pursuant to all these codes, as well as what injunctive relief and whatever the court deems necessary and proper. So he wants the money, and he also wants uh, Kanye West to stop doing all of this crazy stuff that he's been doing. Let's get into the factual allegations. Plaintiff's job performance. At all times, plaintiffs perform his job duties in an exemplary and enthusiastic manner. Plaintiff is an African-American male. Plaintiff suffers from a perceived medical condition slash medical disability still undergoing diagnosis. Plaintiff blew the whistle on Ye's illicit and or believed to be illicit instruction and conduct. Since his disturbing termination, plaintiff has remained unemployed despite a good faith effort to find work. Plaintiff's hiring. In or around November of 2022, Kanye West interviewed Trevor Phillips for the position at Yeezy's, Kanye's juggernaut fan fashion brand. That night, Kanye extended uh, Phillips a job offer. 
During the interview and thereafter, Kanye explained that Phillip's duties would, among other things, include overseeing projects related to growing cotton and other plants to use as material in Yeezy clothing line, as well as food to eventually create self-sustainable Yeezy community. Ultimately, however, Philip did Philip not only Ultimately, however, Philip not only did work for Yeezy, but also Donda Academy, Kanye's K through 12 Christian private school. Oh, there's like weird sounds with the with the um, headphones. Anyways, Phillips having watched Kanye's meteoric rise to super to superstardom during his youth and much of his adult life was thrilled to be working with one of the most famous artists in his generation. Philip saw Kanye not only as a boss but as an inspiration to him. Kanye represented the possibilities of what a black man could accomplish in America: achievement, recognition, and financial freedom. Truly, the American dream. With this in mind, Philip passionately dove into his work. So. So he started working with him and that's when things started going bad. So first, Kanye placed Phillips in and four others into a team that he dubbed the vertically integrated crew, which what the heck does that mean? He sends them like happy Thanksgiving. Our guy says, thank you for the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. While the Vic, and that's what they're calling the vertically integrated crew, while the Vic was initially charged with figuring out how to grow cotton and plants to Kanye's specification, this priority quickly changed. Why is he growing his own cotton? I get he's trying to be like self-sustainable and like grow the cotton to his specifications. I don't know. Something about that feels racist to me. You making the black guy grow the cotton? I mean, I don't know. That that feels weird to me. But anyways, let's go on. Just a few weeks prior to Phillips hiring, Kanye went viral in the media for launching a flurry of assaults and threats on Jewish people. For example, on or around October 8th, 2022, Kanye tweeted um, to his tens of millions of followers, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going uh, Death Con 3 on Jewish people. What the heck does that mean? Shortly after, Twitter removed the statement and locked Kanye out of his account, as they should. Rather than apologize for his anti-Semitic remarks, uh, Kanye chose to double down. Capitalizing on virality, Kanye continued to spread his hate through a press run of many interviews, including the Lex Friedman podcast, Andrew Kumo interview show, and several others. Collectively garnering tens of millions of views during those interviews, Kanye boastfully and deplorably championed his deep-rooted anti-Semitism and hate for Jewish people, echoing tropes that have stereotyped Jewish or Jews for much of history. He referenced the Jewish underground media mafia and how every celebrity has Jewish people in their contract. Jared Kushner is an example of how the Jewish people have their hand in every single business that controls the world. Within a few days, nearly every media outlet in the country has some way to cover Kanye's antics. Just as quickly as he went viral, Kanye's top business associates dropped all ties with the artists, including Balenciaga, the Gap Creative Arts Agency, and perhaps his most popular partner, Adidas, with whom he built a multi-million dollar partnership overnight. Kanye's wealth um, nosedive. <laughs> nosedived. <laughs> I've never seen nosedive written out as a word. Interesting. Um, the consequences of Kanye's discriminatory animus, animus also re- reverberated. Why do you use such difficult words? Not only to Yeezys, but also to the lesser known enterprises, including his school. So basically everything went down. But Kanye asked Phillips to be on call 24 seven. So he basically asked him to be more available. And in doing so, he acknowledged that he should be paying them no- more and told him he would be paying them $100 per hour. Kanye mixed his Yeezys and Donda Academy funds and began having Phillips do both work. Around the same time, Adidas, Kanye's partner in Yeezys, not only publicly denounced Kanye's re- recent anti anti-Semitism, uh, but also vowed to cut ties with the rapper. Because of this split, the Yeezys account were frozen and Phillips nor the other Yeezys employee are the... Yeah nor the other Yeezy members were being paid. On several occasions, Phillips complained to Kanye and several and other officials asking when he would be paid. Kanye would respond, you will be taken care of. Just don't worry about it. Shortly thereafter, Phillips received wires from Donda Academy rather than Yeezys for work he did for Yeezys. So he's paying his workers through 
his school account when they worked for um when they worked for the Yeezys part of the business. As the bank accounts of Yeezy and Donda apparently blended, so did a Phillips job responsibility. Going forward on any given day, he would be working on tasks for both Donda and Yeezy. Ultimately, there appeared to be no difference between the two entities nor himself. Kanye began spreading anti-Semitism in meetings at school. Around the same time, Kanye proudly touted his discriminatory conspiracies of Jews during meetings at Donda Academy. Phillips on several occasions witnessed Kanye preach to his staff obscenities such as the Jews are out to get me. What? Is he going crazy? The Jews are out to get me. The Jews are stealing all my money because they closed down Yeezys. Uh, fearing that the jobs and also... Basically saying Adidas, Adidas was basically Jews stealing his money. Is that what he's trying to say? Fearing for their jobs and also the, to de-escalate Kanye's absurdities so that the two present school children did not hear, the school staff did their best to ignore him. However, in front of the two school children, Kanye continued to danger the dangerous rhetoric. Kanye started to openly discuss how he only likes to date white women. We already knew that. I mean, that's not a surprise. Then addressing the two school children, Kanye told them that he wanted them to shave their heads and that he intended to put a jail at the school and that they could be locked in cages. What's wrong with him? Uh, the staff quickly distracted the children and ex escorted them out of the room. Kanye also told the employees in that meeting that no staff could be fat <laughs> or he would fire them. What does that have to do with doing your job? What is he talking about? You can't be fat. Okay, so now he got fat phobia too. Kanye West invites Phillips to the Nobu Hotel where he insults Jews and gay people. On or around December 2nd, 2022, Kanye expect unexpectedly called Phillips for, for, for the first time. Yo, check out what I'm about to send you. Phillips replied, okay. Kanye then asked, what are you doing right now? <laughs> Philip said, who had only started his job a few weeks earlier and wanted to be available for his new boss, responded, nothing. I just got home from the school. Kanye commanded, come meet me at dinner at STK. Let's go over everything. Phillips agreed and started driving to the restaurant. As Phillips, oh, as Phillips was just arriving, Kanye called again. Actually, we're meeting at Nobu. Kanye then sent the address and Phillips rerouted his destination. He went ahead and sent him that. There was like a movie thing sent to him. And then he was going on his way. Phillips arrived at the exclusive and intimate Nobu Hotel in Malibu around 9.40 p.m. The staff greeted him. After about 20 minutes, Kanye appeared alone wearing a, ja a black jacket and holding a black mask in his hand. It was the same outfit Kanye wore a day or two earlier during his interview with InfoWars conspiracist Alex Jones. So this is how he showed up to one of his interviews. Um, the hotel staff exhorted Phillips and Kanye to a small hotel room. And then they got to the room. Kanye then abruptly spoke and said, what do you think about the video Coach Murphy sent me? In reference to the text messages Kanye had called Philip about a few hours earlier. In those texts, Coach Murphy, a Donda Academy employee, had sent Kanye a video of news clips showing that what purported to be people in Israel Israel assaulting people of color. Before Phillips could respond, Kanye interjected again, I think I'm going to fire Coach Murphy. Look what Murphy sent me. He sent me this racist video. From the man, the from the man gloating, talk about he only dates white women and spewing about the Jews and all the like. He has some nerve to call somebody racist. Uh, Phillips confused, tried to respond delicately. I think he was just trying to show you what was going on in Israel. I don't know him well, but I don't think Murphy is racist or a bad guy. Kanye aggressively fired back. No, he's fired. Don't defend him. Phillips alone in the room with Kanye and scared to anger his boss anymore, sat silently and looking away. Suddenly, Ye grabbed the hotel phone and so sternly told the operator, I asked you to put on Batman. Come put on Batman now. Because apparently Kanye West doesn't know how to work a freaking TV. Um, a few minutes later, the, no, the Nobu hotel staff came to turn on Batman for them to watch. After a, um, and they watched in silence. After a long and awkward silence, Kanye finally spoke again, turning his attention back to Phillips to, and he began 
an unprovoked and bigoted rat attacking Jewish people, referencing the stereotypes b- dating back to the Middle Ages that Jews are miser- miserly. Uh, Kanye Alpine, these Jews are greedy. Uh, with sincerity, he professed, I hate Jewish people. Uh, rather than recognizing or repeating for the public remarks, he shifted blame on his misfortune to others. Adidas did me wrong. So he thinks that Jewish people are controlling Adidas, who also fired him after he said racist stuff about Jewish people. Kanye West. What are you talking about? How does that even all add up? Anyways, let's go on. Perhaps most shockingly, Kanye glorified the very person responsible for the brutal genocide over 6 million Jews. Hitler was great. Hitler was an in, in, innovator. <laughs> Why can I say that way? Hitler was an innovator. He was a, he invented so many things. He's the reason we have cars. What? What? Hitler didn't invent cars. Am I tripping? Hitler didn't invent cars. <laughs> During the rant, Phillips couldn't help but think of his own close friend who were Jew- his own close friends who were Jewish and how their families were likely affected by Hitler's massacre. No longer no longer able to continue listening to Kanye's verbal filth, Phillips built up some courage and calmly responded, well, if Hitler was so great, then what about the Holocaust? Ye absurdly yelled back, that was fake. Oh. <laughs> and slavery was a choice, y'all. What's wrong with him? Recognizing, and remember, y'all, this is a complaint, so it's all allegations until it can be proven true, but we all have also seen Kanye say on live TV that uh, slavery was a choice for Black people. So let's go on. Recognizing Kanye's increasingly hostile and aggressive tone, Phillips ignored the um, preposterous statement and and to de-escalate the situation. After a brief pause, Kanye resumed his attack. Hitler was a good person and said and said the Jewish people are bad and they run America and Chinese people run them. The Zionist Jews are out to get me. Kanye. They're out to get me. They are a part of the human sex trafficking. Um, The Jews are working with Adidas to freeze up my money and try and make me broke. Or you're just being racist, you know? Racist is a thing. The Jews can't stop me. Adidas can't stop me. I will be the richest person in the world. Sounds like they're stopping you. Okay. I'm feeling deeply uncomfortable. Phillips attempted to shift topics, searching for any topic but Jewish conspiracy theories. Phillips looked at the TV and hastily referenced the movie still playing, pointed out the actress playing Catwoman. Phillips commented that Zoe Kravitz was pretty. Kanye eerily responded, you look like Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> Black dude, and you tell him he looks like Zoe Kravitz. <laughs> Phillips was caught off guard by the comment and gave Kanye a confused look, catching himself complimenting his employee. Kanye responded, Yeah, you look like her, but not like that. You are handsome, like a Lenny Kravitz type of way. <laughs> Phillips felt great discomfort, at least. So you thought he was flirting with you because he said you look like Catwoman? Just a few minutes later, while lying flat on the bed and staring up at the ceiling, Kanye began... Why is he there? I thought they were about to talk about work. Why is he even in the hotel room anymore? Just a few moments later, while lying flat on the bed and staring up at the ceiling, Kanye West began to make slow up and down motions with his hand just above his genitals as though he was masturbating. While he recounted to Phillips, I used to have orgies every day, at least two to three girls. And now, man, I can't even lay down without, without (laughs) entertaining his male genitals. Then Kanye used his second hand to forcefully dramatically grab and pull the hand, making the gestures away from his male genitals as he said i gotta keep my hand away from my phone to keep me away from looking at adult films phillips i'm gonna get yellow flagged again i got yellow flagged for the last live stream y'all oh my gosh i didn't see this part when i was skimming 
Phillips totally shocked and distraught by Kanye's incest, 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 insistent. <laughs> I don't know. It says, I, can he put it in the back for me? What does it say? It's assess and assessant. Oh, it doesn't sound right to me still. Um, anyways. Here we go. Phillips totally shocked and distraught by the inappropriate conduct. In particular, his apparent arousal. What was meant to be a meeting with his boss about Donna Academy, its curriculum, and horticulture ended up being an anti-Semitic and bigoted soliloquy topped off with SH. <laughs> yeah. Stimulating his actual arousal more, Kanye then FaceTimed a female friend. Phillips immediately recognized the female's name because only a few weeks earlier while at Yeezy headquarters, Kanye had flaunted nude pictures of her to many of the Yeezy staff members. You cannot do that. Uh, the, fam the female answered Kanye's call and he commanded her, next time I see you, you better make sure you are wearing the lingerie and the shoes I got you. Way to answer the phone. The longer Phillips sat there, the more trouble and uncomfortable he felt. On one hand, he was disgusted by Kanye's bigoted rhetoric and actual gestures, making him want to leave. You should leave. You should have already left. But on the other hand, Philip felt a duty to his school children, including his younger brother and also daughter, who both attended Dada Academy. Take them out of that school. Not only to educate them, but also now insulate them. Leaving, leaving and being on Kanye's bad side would not help him with that goal. Moreover, Phillips was grateful for his job. It was one that his own mother had helped him get and disappointed her was not an option. If she knew what he was doing, it should have been an option. Luckily for Phillips, Nobu room service interrupted Kanye's actual drive. Hundreds of dollars and sushi was served. That sounds delicious. And while Kanye indulged in his food, he could not resist indulging in his favorite topic. The Jews are greedy and they keep trying to take all my money. As he's eating sushi... <laughs> In addition to other repeated attacks on Jewish people, Kanye then began threatening the LGBTQ community. Yeah, I'm going for the gays. First the Jews, then the gays. What is he talking about? Phillips asked, what did gay people do? Kanye responded, gay people are not true Christians and gay people are controlled by Bill Gates so that they don't have children for the population control. What? What are you talking about? Phillips sat in silence and disbelief until about 1 a.m. and then went home. Why? Just go home like you're a grown man. Kanye goes about using school funds to fund his $2 million trip to Paris. $2 million trip to Paris? That's crazy. Around the same time Kanye took a trip to Paris, upon his return, Kanye gloated to Donda and Yeezy staff, admitting that he mismanaged the school <sighs> mismanaged the school's money Specific specifically he told Phillips and other staff that he spent two millions of the school budget on the trip to Paris doing what Phillips could not help but wonder if the money included the school children's tuition had to where else would he get the money from Phillips notices Kanye's discriminatory pattern towards black people a few months into his job at Donda Phillips started to notice that Kanye treated black empo employees palpably worse than the white employees for instance, on one occasion during a meeting, Phillips suggested that the school have a class teaching students about solar panels. Without hesitation, Kanye publicly chastised Phillips' proposal. In front of many staff, Kanye yelled, solar panels don't ever say that again. The way you think, caught off guard, Phillips, how does he remember everything, like, to put it in quotes, everything that he said. Um, caught off guard, Phyllis attempted to defend his idea by noting that solar panels are in line with Kanye's goal to create self-sustaining community. While they are a way to be sustainable, many places use them. Out of control, Ye incessantly, I think I said that right this time, incessantly uh, yelled out, at and humiliated Phillips. A few weeks later, during a meeting, a white school employee named Steve raised the idea of teaching the students about solar panels. <laughs> this sounds like a movie. Um, this time, to Phillips' disbelief, Kanye lauded Steve's idea of this is genius. <laughs> hey. So, Phillips, don't you ever talk about solar panels again. Steve, what a genius. <laughs> The only difference between Steve's suggestion and Phillips proposed a few weeks earlier was that Phillips was suggested by a black man. Do you think that's the only difference? Or maybe he just doesn't like you. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. But with the way that Kanye is asked, acting, maybe it is because he's black. I don't know. 
<laughs> Kanye continues to put down black men in favor of white men. On another occasion, a Donna Academy employee named Eric Cutter, a white man, proposed a plan for the school children to paint the garden boxes red. Kanye approved the plan in the exact colors. Lovely Trevor. This is the barn red color we suggested for the tables. Please get approval from Yay ASAP. Um, Eric, again, good morning, all. I received approval from Yay last night to the paint tables. We'll use the barn red shown in the picture. Aid, I'll call you in the morning to organize the work for schedule. Cheers, Eric. According to these instructions, Philip had his students start painting the garden boxes the same approved red. Then suddenly, Kanye busted into the classroom uncontrollably screaming at Phillips in front of the children. Why you got my kids painting red? Have them stop that now. Phillips was totally confused, wondering why he was being blamed for lesson plans made by his colleague and approved by Kanye himself. The only plausible answer to Phillips was that it was because he was black and Cutter was white. I don't know how you're making these ties. I, I really I want to be on the plaintiff side, but I don't know how he's making that tie. During his tenure, Phillips never witnessed Kanye yell or and berate a white person, but on countless occasions he saw and 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 or personally experienced Kanye frenzied yell at black people. Concerned for his students, Philip quickly uh, concerned for his students, Phillips quickly ended the art lesson and attempted to move on with his day. Unprovoked, another Black employee tells plaintiff he thinks Kanye is racist towards Black people. One afternoon while working in Donda's gardens, a Black security guard approached Phillips after a meeting earlier with Kanye's public, where Kanye public, publicly, typo, publicly berated Phillips. Without any provocation, the, seri- the security guard asked Phillips, why doesn't he like us? Confused, Phillips responded, what? The security guard replied while pointing at his skin, he loves white people, why does he hate us? The security guard went on to disclose numerous instances where Kanye mistreated people because they were black and in contrast, how he always treated white people more favorably. So I think this being put earlier probably would have helped because I'm like, just because you're painting it red, he's yelling at you because you're black. I don't see how you're tying that together, but if he's having conversations like this, then I can see how he's tying it together. Kanye gives the black security guard an ultimatum, shave your dreads or be fired. Sounds like I'm fired and you're going to pay me unemployment. On other occasions, Kanye commanded that a black campus security guard shave his dreads or threaten that he would be fired. Ultimately, the security guard resigned. No, let him fire you. Phillips blows the whistle on Kanye's illegal conduct and plans. In or around December 2022, Kanye scrapped the plans Phillips and the the Vic team were working on to convert his Calabasas process property process. Where am I getting these words? Calabasas property into a school for Donda. Instead, Kanye purchased a decrepit church and neighboring building that he intended to make the home of Donda Academy. Kanye ordered his staff in the school that the school opened in just a few weeks, January 17, 2023. After a site visit, Phillips, who is neither an architect nor a building engineer, knew that this was obviously an impossible task given the building's dilapidated condition. He knew also, he he knew also knew, what? Why did he write that? He also knew that it was a good, it was a goal that would endanger the school children, including his own little brother and daughter. So this is the building, I guess, that he bought, which you guys can see, like it has boards on the window and it just doesn't look like the best condition, right? Um, Given the extent of needed renovation, Phillips reported to Kanye that the project would legally require planning and building permits, even more so presumably because they were building a school. Kanye, however, demanded that Phillips and the team complete the renovations without any permits. (laughs) You're a teacher and now you're doing construction. <laughs> Phillips recognized that this was not only illegal, but also would put the school children and staff in potentially serious danger. Phillips built up the courage and responded that they needed to get permits as required by the law. Agitated, Kanye aggressively told Phillips, if you can't do the job, I'll find someone else who can then do it. Okay, Phillips shortly thereafter approached the school Kimberly Calvo, Kanye's new project manager, to air out his concerns. Phillips explained to Love to Love that Kanye was instructing him and others to break the law by building without approved permits and how this put the students and staff in it at a huge risk. 
Kimberly responded, this is how Kanye wants to do it. Soon after, Kanye removed Phillips and the rest of the team from the renovation project, demoting them. Kanye's project manager ex- instructs Phillips to do dangerous electrical work outside in the rain. Now he's an electrician. Now he's an electrician. Okay. Around this time, one of Kanye's building project managers, Kimberly Calvo, instructed Phillips to do electrical wire work in the rain. Phillips responded that it was raining and dangerous, but Calvo instructed Phillips that Kanye needed it to be done. Phillips completed the electrical work in the in the rain, luckily without injury. So you didn't want to build the building, but you did the electrical work. Just quit. Kanye latches out at Phillips and compares himself to Hitler. On or around December 29th, 2022, Kanye requested Phillips text him a list of seeds that Phillips would purchase for Donda Academy. Phillips responded with a list of about 29 seeds with their respective pricing. Kanye replied asking if they were any seeds missing from the list. Phillips then responded with three additional seeds missing from the prior list. The conversation continues as follows with Kanye comparing himself to Hitler. Okay, Kanye West says... Why wasn't it on the previous list you sent? Why am I asking the same thing over and over? With all due respect, just feels like I'm always being dragged and ignored. Even by doing things 80% and forcing me to always ask for the same things, the same thing five different ways is no longer acceptable from any and all parties that I do business with and I give directives to. Uh, Someone else says, yes, I am on some complete, or no, I guess this is Kanye West still, says, Yes, I'm on some complete Hitler level stuff, minus the gas chambers in Jesus' name. Not you praying. Um, Trevor says, I apologize. It cut off the list items of my text when I copied and pasted everything. Things you might want that I can get us. Apples. Oh, I guess it's more more lists. Ooh. Okay. Phillips complains to Kanye's principal. Love and Kimberly about live electrical wires exposed to the chil- the school children. Someone else put this in their um their complaint too that the electrical wires were exposed. I mean, you had teachers putting it together for you, so that doesn't really surprise me. Um, in or around early 2023, Phillips did some work in the classroom and noticed that there were electrical wire box. Um, there was an electrical wire box. When Phillips opened the box, he saw live electrical wires totally exposed and uncovered. Realizing the 240 volts of electricity could seriously injure, if not kill, a school child, Phillips complained on several occasions to love, Principal Love, Kimberly, and Kanye himself that they needed a certified electrician to come cover the wires since children were often in that area on information and belief those wires may still be exposed today. Kanye publicly berates Phillips and physically threatens him around school children, school students, and parents. On or around May 21st, 2023, Phillips reported uh, to work at Donda early in the morning for Sunday service, a pseudo-religious sermon where Kanye in a choir plays gospel music often in front of an audience. Phillips, always going above and beyond, showed up far earlier than was expected of him to clean up the garden and make sure everything looked neat and proper. As Phillips walked to pick up a water hose, Kanye from about 100 feet away started screaming at Phillips at the top of his lungs. A you, A get the F out of here. You are effing fired. Get the F out of here. You are effing fired. Phillips, initially unaware that he was the target of Ye screaming, turned around and watched helplessly as Kanye continued to publicly harass and humiliate him. You are effing fired. Go tell your mother and get the F out of here. Well over 100 others watched the spectacle, including at least 40 school children, their parents, churchgoers, and Kanye's friends. Um, Phillips, terrified and shaken up, walked towards his mother, who was also an employee of Donda. On the way, he was stopped by a parent who watched Kanye's harassment concern. She asked, are you okay? Phillips shook his head and kept walking. Phillips' mother pulled him aside and asked him what's wrong. Phillips responded, he went berserk on me. I don't even know what I did. Suddenly, Kanye is visibly, ar- visibly armed and six... N- Six foot nine security guard grabbed Phillips, telling him, You have to come with me, and began exhorting him off the property. As Phillips was being pulled off the property, Kanye's assistant intervened and said, Let me talk to him. Trevor pleaded, What did I do, Z? Res- <clears throat> what did I do, Z? Z responded, Who made the garden? 
who made the garden in the back? Phillips the shirt Z. I didn't build that section. I was just watering the gardens. That was not me. Z left to speak to Kanye along with Phillips' mother, and it appeared as though Kanye had calmed down and understood that Phillips was not at fault. Phillips' mother, Phillips' mother called Phillips over, saying that Kanye wanted to speak with him. Phillips timidly walked over, timidly walked over to Kanye, scolded him just because this looks beautiful to most people and think the garden looks good doesn't mean it was what I wanted. With tears streaming down his face, Phillips insisted, I'm so grateful you gave my mom this opportunity and me this opportunity for work. Pointing to a three and a half inch growth, easily visible on his neck, Phillips said, I have I have this lump on my neck that my doctors have been trying to diagnose and I have no idea what it is. I know that, that this job could be my last it could be my legacy. So I come every day and put my everything into it. My daughter goes to the school here. My little brother, uh, I want to make a difference here. So he has that lump. Uh, Kanye, rushed Kanye rushed close to Philip's face and started yelling so hard that his neck and face that his neck and face veins bulge. F you, Kanye raised his hands and pointed at Philip's neck condition and screamed, F your neck. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of messed up f you f your neck then pointing at the school kanye is the belch and f your daughter i don't give a f about none of that wow what did i say like a couple paragraphs uh back take your daughter out of that school take your little brother out of that school too by this time nearly all people attending the service were watching over 100 people it included not only philip's own mom and daughter but also kanye's own friends such as rap producer 88 keys my thing is why did he call him back over there just to yell at him some more kanye then ran to the gardens and attempted to pick up and toss the garden socks box but but too weak and out of shape, fell to <laughs> not too weak and out of shape, fell to pick them up. Instead, he started pulling out the plants and individual pieces inside the boxes, ripping them apart and throwing them on the floor in a worse and more immature temper tantrum way than any of even the youngest Donda school children had ever thrown. The crowd continued to watch in horror. Phillips, utterly hum humiliated, disgusted, and terrified, stood in shock with tears pouring down his face. Kanye had not only attacked and disregarded his potentially life-threatening medical condition, but uh, worse, vulgarly insulted and disparaged his daughter, one of Donda's students that Kanye personally knew. In a, pathet in a pathetic effort to compose himself, Kanye walked back to up to Phillips and physically threatened him. I was going to punch you in the face, he repeated. I was going to punch you in the face. This time with slaying, Kanye again th thundered. I was going to steal you in the face. Kanye then looked to, to side to side to his project manager, Jake. I was going to punch him, huh, Jake? <laughs> Jake, was he going to punch him? In response, Jake looked down and just shook his head. Phillips asked, why? Phillips asked, why? How are you going to hurt and punch me? What did I ever do? Kanye paused and briefly went on his phone, then imitating the ce celebratory dance of Mario from the famous video game Mario Super Super Mario Brothers, Kanye jumped up with punching one fist in the air while he said, I'm going to give you one more chance, another life, check your phone. Phillips opened his phone and saw an iMessage that said it's yay and had attached a pamphlet for a farm film for a farm in Fillmore, California. Kanye said, you need to go to the farm and talk to the owner. Then tell me if I should buy it or not. Mentally beaten and broken down. Phillips didn't know what to reply other than okay. So he cussed you out. He fired you. He told you he was going to punch you. And then he told you to go look at a farm for him to see if he wants to buy it. Like, are you not done with this? This is insane. Phillips drove home and broke down crying to his younger brother. He broke down not only about Kanye's inhumane treatment that day, but also months of constant harassment, attacks, racism, as well as, ex as, well as exposure to unwelcome sexual innuendos and anti-Semitic remarks. His dream of working for someone he once admired as a great artist was like his spirit crush. While Kanye considered himself a god or king, in reality, he was an ill-tempered tyrant and despot, and despot who sought to mentally obliterate and control those around him. Yeah, I could see that. Still in shock, Phillips drove to the farm that day and toured it as instructed. Kanye called Phillips that evening for an update on the farm visit. After Phillips provided his thought, Kanye told Phillips 
that he was going to purchase the land and put Phillips in charge of running it. Running it. Kanye sold a grand vision with Phillips spearheading it. Yet Kanye did not apologize for his conduct earlier that day, nor even acknowledge it. The following day, Phillips resumed the tour and then drove home in the evening. Just as he got home, Phillips received a text from Kanye West. You are fired. You are not on the level. You still fired. <laughs> you still fired. You're not on the level. Shortly thereafter, Donda's principal love called Phillips, apologizing for Kanye's behavior and assuring him that he was still employed. I'm really sorry. You know how he is. He hires and fires people all the time. Just brush it under the rug. There's no one at the school to take care of the chickens without you. Jeez, you're only keeping me around to take care of the chickens. So please do me a favor and finish out the last few days of the semester. Phillips returned to the school for work and avoided Kanye at all costs. Okay. Ye shut down Donna Academy as part of a plan to rebrand and reopen it. Okay. In or around early August 2023, Phillips worked his last day at Donna Academy. Principal Love informed the staff that she was in, unsure if the school would reopen in the future. It needs to be shut down. In or around August 2023, after the school shut down, Phillips asked Principal Love why he had not been offered a severance or termination paperwork. Love responded, we don't know if the school is closing officially yet. According to several reports from publications in March 2024, Kanye is planning to publicly open Donda Academy on information and belief. Donda Academy still operates to this day. Um, let's see. Um, injunctive relief. Plaintiff thinks that all defendants be prohibited from owning and operating any type of educational institu institution for minors under the age of 18 years old in the state of California, in addition to other injunctive relief per the prior below. Economic dam damages. As so that it just stops right there. He just starts asking for stuff. That was the end of the facts. Uh, let me just finish this out because it's almost done. Economic damages. Um, as a consequence of defendant's conduct, plaintiff has suffered uh, has suffered and will suffer harm, including lost past and future income and employment benefits, damage to his career and loss of wages, overtimes, unpaid expenses and penalties, as well as interest on unpaid wages at the legal rate from um, and after each payday on which those wages should have been paid and the sum to be proven at trial. They go on to do the non-economic, the punitive damages, that he was malice, oppressive, fraud, all of the things. I'm not going to go through that because it's just kind of pleading the facts. And we got a lot of chats to get through. So that was not well put together in my opinion. But do we get the gist of what he's suing over? He's basically suing saying that Kanye West was racist. Um, he's basically discriminating against him. He's basically kind of treating him bad because... He is black. Again, I don't know how he's tying that it has to do with him being black versus maybe Kanye West just being a little um, off his rocker. But nonetheless, he says that it has to do with racism. So let's go ahead and jump in the chat. I don't really know how I feel about that lawsuit. Employment discrimination. It doesn't sound like he was ever really fired. It sounds like the school just kind of stopped. So let's see what the chat has to say. Yeah, my throat is so dry. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. We got Devince Morris saying maybe, and I know some of these chats are a little old because y'all posted them like almost an hour ago uh, when I started that long stretch of Kanye West. Okay, Devince Morris says maybe Kanye was so Sue Birkin and we can tie this together. <laughs> maybe. Jill says, my YouTube says two hours, just saying, keep going, because Insomnia has been here for a visit for the last three nights. That is all good. We are here. We are having a good time. Jazzy G says, I didn't realize he actually was working at the school. Thought he just opened the school. No, like he was there and doing stuff there. And he's, he's there to kind of lead the children. Jill says, taking my kids to his school, not famous people, please try to do normal things. Stay in your lane. I'll keep ignoring you. No, they keep they keep imposing themselves on us. Upside down says, who would send a kid to a school he opened? The the ad is knowing he was on campus. Yeah, 
Because they're trying to, they think that they're going to be able to get their kids into the industry. That's what I'm thinking. Jill says, Kanye, do settle and sign an agreement. You just keep doing dumb Hollywood stuff in your house. And he just needs to leave. He needs to stop being famous. Like literally he needs to go off grid. Upside down says, take your meds, Kanye. For real. Upside down says, not joking. He needs to stabilize. Yeah, he does have mental health issues that he needs to get under control. Joel says no joke needs no joke needs treatment. He is supposed to be he's supposed to have meds. Charlene Anderson says it feels very racist. Which part of it? Jill says short crew and tall crew. <laughs> the vertical one, right? <laughs> the man says, Mr. West, you are no different than me. I am no different than you. We all bleed the same blood when cut sigh. Yeah. He was on something. Natata says, wait, he said he was going to be, he was going to go DEFCON on the Jews a year exactly prior to the Gaza Strip invasion. Yeah, I mean, he, I don't know what's wrong with him. And he was just doing crazy stuff around that time. I mean, he's still doing crazy stuff. Kimmy Locker says the military ranks their readiness for potential national, um, potential, Potential national security threats with DEFCON system. DEFCON 3 indicates a significant risk of an imminent attack, but DEFCON isn't a thing, right? Makes sense. Upside Down says perhaps Kanye should worry about his own behavior and work towards role modelship as a humanitarian rather than um, Adolf. Right, right. Jill says antics if you're famous, hate crimes, discrimination for the rest of us. Yeah. He's getting away with a lot. And the thing is, he just has so much money, even though all the brands kicked him out, he still, he still can do what he wants. Lindsay, Lindsay said, we are actually surprised that Kanye is doing it. Are we, are we actually surprised that Kanye is doing any of this? No, I'm not. Are you guys? Kat McGowan says he's kind of fat too. I was thinking that. I was like, didn't he gain weight at some point? And like, even in the complaint, it said that he was unfit or something like that, weak and unfit. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know. And y'all, just to let you know, we have hit the 100 like goal. Um, If you haven't hit the like button, please do our like goal for the stream was 100 and we are exactly at 100 likes. So I am going to play our video that I still have not corrected. So we have an explosion coming in three, two, one. <laughs> All right, we have hit the like goal. Thank you so much, everyone, for hitting the like goal and supporting the stream. This like pushes the stream out to more people so that we can have more friends. I know this one was kind of a long live stream, but it was a good live stream. I think it was a great time. Okay, <laughs> well, it's not over, but let's go. <laughs> Defense Morris says, unless the staff are consuming the students, obesity should not be a thing, right? <laughs> I hope they're not consuming the students. Josie B says, not Kanye making a child jail after speaking against mass incarceration. And also that he's going to be Hitler without gas chambers. So he still wants to lock people up. Upside Down says, their kids, chaos waiting to happen. Yeah. Why do you have your kids in that school? Joe says, already chaos. Kids don't have a chance not learning from him. Cheryl Reed says, I have to call this straight up mental illness that needs treatment seriously. And this kind of feels like what this lawsuit was just kind of exposing um, what Kanye has been doing and going through. Maybe he has a claim for harassment. Maybe he has a claim for some of the things, but I think a lot of the stuff put in there was unnecessary to kind of prove his point. And then like, it just kind of stops like in the middle of the fact. So I don't think it was the best. I don't think it was put together the best. But no, I definitely think that Kanye West has some issues and he has been diagnosed, diagnosed with some issues. Kanye West says to Cheryl Reed, agreed and with his resources, there's no reason to not get treatment. I believe he has um, treatment, if I'm not mistaken. Defense Moore says Volkswagen and Volkswagen, Hitler pushed funding for an affordable car for the masses, but not necessary. Oh, like the reason why like regular people can drive cars. Maybe. Okay. That makes sense. Now the tat says, Oh, he said Hitler invented cars because apparently Henry Ford was a huge anti, uh, defense more says, I think the squirrels are out to get Kanye. 
Everyone, bring guys out to get Kanye at this point. Charlene, Charlene Anderson says the founder of Adidas was a known Nazi sympathizer and his factories before shoes made <clears throat> and his factories before shoes made stuff for Nazi war machine. Really? That's interesting. A small says the you look like Zoe Kravitz comment is wow. <laughs> My boy was fantasizing hard, allegedly. Devince Moore says he can't turn Batman movie. He can't turn Batman movie on, but he can check out adult films. Right? He needs someone to help him turn on the TV, but on his phone he has the adult films. Mine Spasm says you got to use code word Brie. I couldn't. It was. It's hard for me, and I'm like tired, so it's hard for me to even think of <laughs> think of the words to code to code. Okay. I'm probably already hit with the yellow the yellow flag anyways. Upside Down says, why are these people given airtime? Honestly, between him and Diaper Don stupidity, Diaper Don stupidity, I'm done. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. Jazzy G says, is this about the wife? As far as Kanye? No. Jazzy G says, Kanye wife. No, this is not about his wife. This is about um, his school and someone suing Kanye West. Finn says, yes, those Jewish sushi bars are out to get you, Kanye, right? <laughs> well, he's saying that the Jewish people are controlled by the Chinese people, so he can still eat sushi because sushi is Japanese. So, <laughs> Chelsea B says, this man is so wealthy. Why is he using the school's money for anything? He may not be as wealthy as we think he is. He might have lost a lot. I mean, he did lose a lot of his income by saying that stupid stuff that he said. Cheryl Reed says, I'm not buying all of this. I kind of, it aligns for me with something that Kanye did. Upside Down says, solar panels are being given away. Shake my head. Tiny D says, welcome to my world. I listen to this type of rant and delusional thinking all the time. I'm sorry to hear that, Tiny D. I hope that gets better for you. Peggy says, well, but it won't because the field that you're in. Peggy says, if Phillips was smart, he documented all of this at the time and will be able to produce those notes when needed. That's what I'm thinking because he like had things in quotation marks and usually you're not supposed to do that. You just, you know, something along the lines. But also he quoted a text message, but it wasn't exactly what the quote, the text message actually said. So I don't know if all of his quotes are actually accurate. Jazzy G says, it does sound like a sketch. So it does. <laughs> Kimmy Lanka says, why is he calling the students my kids, though? Uh, he probably, he feels like he owns everything. He owns the school. He owns you. He owns the kids. The Vince Moore says, Kanye is just mad because he wasn't allowed to buy a Birkin. <laughs> That's probably the root of it all, right? Just me, MD says, Kanye sure seems to have a very active role with his school. I thought they put their name on it and move on. Not Kanye West. He wants control. He he lost control of his marriage, in my opinion, and now he has to find something else to control, in my opinion. Hence why he got married so fast to someone that no one even knows who she is. Um, and he just tries to make her look like another Kim Kardashian. Cheryl Reed says, sounds like Ye was having a major mental breakdown. And why was Phillips listening? This doesn't make sense to me. Seems sketchy. It is. And seems like the school is not really opening back up. So he's just trying to recover whatever money he can. Jazzy G says, is this a new lawsuit? Wonder why the delay if it happened in 2022. It looks like um, after the 2023 school year or... I guess they were building the school. Basically, they were supposed to open back up in 2024 and they're not. So now he's suing. So some of the stuff was in 2023. Uh, Zello's Boo says, catching up, read the Birkin bags. If they were told they needed to purchase so much to get the bag, purchase more and get there and, di and didn't get it, I could see suing. Yeah, I can agree with that too. I can agree with that too. If, if they were like, oh yeah, buy all this stuff and then they never give you the opportunity for the bag, that's a different story. But it's kind of like buying into a golf club, in my opinion. Uh, Kimmy Locker says he said minus the gas chambers, but claimed the Holocaust was fake. Yeah. He also says slavery was a choice. So I don't listen to nothing Kanye says at this point. Jewel says they're dealing with more than half a deck. Uh, Jewel says lights on, <laughs> but no one's home. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, he's been diagnosed. He just, I, I watched a documentary and I believe if I remember correctly, he said he doesn't like taking the medication. 
Shell Reed said he brings up his lump. Yeah, he's like, F your neck, bro. <laughs> like, geez Louise. Shell Reed says, and I don't really know if that lump is like a disability. So there's that. Because I think he's trying to claim like some disability stuff too. Cheryl Reed says, was this reported in the media at the time? I don't think so. A lot of the employees came out and sued him like after they get fired. But it doesn't sound like this guy got fired. Sounds like he's still in, he got fired and then was told he was still employed. But now the school year is like not starting up. Upside Down says, where's the Board of Education? Not involved in Kanye's school. <laughs> Jill says, is there a full moon? All I hear is crazy from the bag of Kanye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kimmy Laga says the first word was Mario. <laughs> yes. Uh, Jesse G says, why would he go back and work there? I wouldn't. He feels like he had an opportunity, but he's abusing you. Ashley D says, not surprised. Feel kind of bad for him because clearly mental health issues are ram ravaging him, but I also would never tie myself to him in any realm whatsoever because of all his drama. And he likes the drama, right? And Small says, did we get an MVB of the stream already doing laundry, mostly listening? We did not get an MVB of the stream yet. Uh, Kimmy Locker says, Smalls, no, but I vote Sandy for gifting memberships. Okay, we got Sandy for gifting memberships. Any other nominations? Because we're getting close to the end of the stream. All the Happy Squirrel says, can confirm Squirrel Chateau wants something to do with Kanye or his nonsense. <laughs> I believe that. We do not want anything to do with Kanye. Like I said, we hit our like goal. We're now at 101 likes. Again, if you haven't hit the like button, Please do. It does help us out in the algorithm. It helps us get, us get more friends for the live stream. This was a long one, but I appreciate all of you guys for hanging in there. We got one MVB nomination. We are going to go ahead and give it to Sandy for gifting the five boss attorney Bree memberships. <laughs> Sorry to wake y'all up late at night if you were getting ready to go to sleep. I'm sure that just woke you up. <laughs> Sorry about that. Did not think about that. So MVB for the MVB for the live stream is Sandy. We have reached our light goal. We have covered the crazy cases. I hope that everyone has a lovely, have a lovely weekend. And I will see y'all all on the next live stream. Bye. And hopefully my Wi-Fi doesn't cut.